Uh, good morning, everyone. <laughs> and welcome to our next webinar. Um, today is October the 9th, <laughs> the 9th of October. I'm just like turning uh, British right now, I guess. Um, hi, people from the UK, Hania, and um, how are you? So honored to have you. And um, yeah, so welcome. We have a, such a fantastic group today. I'm so excited. Um, we're doing a still live pomegranates. And um, I we did a little introduction, uh, but what I wanted to do right now before we go in is just to show you some of the photos that I uploaded. Um, because I want to go over the most important thing in this paintings in this painting exercise, which will be composition. Uh, I cannot um, reinforce this issue enough. Composition, composition, composition. Forget about details, forget about color matching and stuff like that. Uh, by the way, I just put some kind of like granite uh, color. I don't know if that exists. It's gonna be about composition. And I wanna show you uh, something that it's not cheesy. I feel like um, uh, I mentioned it in the email and I'm gonna explain exactly what that means. Let me just go back really quickly because I think uh, this will, um, either confirm uh, what you just uh, posted or you have time to make arrangements right now. Um, and since it's sort of like a fruit, the sketching could take a little bit less time than um, a portrait. So let me see. Hi, Jen. Hi. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> I love, I'm so excited to see this and I love your tie and everything's amazing. Oh, thanks, Jen. Oh, I'm <laughs> so happy um, that you're here. <laughs> um, so yeah, really quickly. So I'm just gonna go over the paintings. This is the cover. I love this artist, uh, Morris Graves. Um, he named every single pet that he had in that uh, island off of the coast of Seattle, uh, Edith. So I was just thinking I have two dogs, we have two dogs, uh, it would be just impossible to, um, it would be impossible <laughs> to have some sense of uh, uh, normalcy if we call, if we had to call everyone Edith, but I just found it uh, really beautiful. The Ukrainian artist who lives in St. Petersburg and I love his work. He has a tendency, he has his collection of naked ladies, which I'm not gonna use against him, but uh, he has other stuff that I really like. We can go over that. This is Maurice Graves again, simplicity. Um, Coubert, uh, uh, yes, I think I pronounced it uh, uh, incorrectly during the presentation. Dali, Dali, uh, the Greek artist, very fav. I'm just going over really quickly. Uh, John Singer Sergeant, Sergeant, forget about this um, painting, uh, Calder. And I thought this is a photo. I don't even know if it's a photograph. It looks like a painting. Uh, there's a lot of dark notes behind. So number one, consider what your background looks like because there's a lot of like umbers, raw umbers, blacks, and, and a lot of the images that I selected by the way, I did that in order to give you an idea if you wanted to get one of this as a reference or to give you an idea. Uh, Off-center uh, reflection, so that happens to be a motif in a lot of uh, photographs that is super tiny, uh, but did I upload this photograph? Uh, I don't remember it. If I did, look at the composition. Single fruit, lower right uh, end, of the or corner of the painting, uh, browns and grays on the on the background. The color only is feature on the fruit. Uh, sense of light or the direction of the light very important. So look at this well studied structure composition. It's not just random. Uh, photograph again dark uh, background and simplicity. So this one it's uh, eye level. The fruit is on eye level. So there's uh, it's just like a round um, uh, shape essentially. Um, a different kind of background, uh, landscape composition, uh, and I love the, uh, the play of like um, um, depth of field or the game of depth of field. So uh, 
open fruit uh, sharpened and then the full fruit, the other full fruit um, unfocused. I absolutely love this composition, high contrast, neutral background. I love the fact that the cast shadow um, underneath the pomegranate blends, merges or bleeds over the dark um, ground. So again, study very, very carefully what you wanna do on your blank canvas This is or, or surface. This is not gonna be so much about getting them the perfect uh, texture or making sure that it looks like a pomegranate for me, or to me, this will be uh, uh, composition. Uh, reverse background in regards to value, very light, still very neutral. A lot of the uh, fruits were placed on plates or platters, consider that as well to give a sense of the fruits sitting on something um, that it's horizontal, uh, vertical composition, a single fruit, the light comes from behind. So uh, look at the cast shadow again, it just merges. There is no separation between the bottom and um, the plate. I think this was, I thought it was a photograph or it looks like a painting. It just looks like it's on top of like newspaper or on top of like a page. I love that as well. I think there's something um, very conceptually different with that, but notice the background very, um, uh, uh, Dutch uh, golden age, um, 1500s, dark. Uh, this is uh, Van Dyke Brown, um, uh, aerial um, bird's eye view composition, also very simple, occupying the entire space and uh, framing the fruit, um, full uh, um, fruit, nothing um, open or broken. Uh, I love the spoon here. It's a different way of showing the inside of the fruit we have without having to open it and have that uh, texture. So consider that as well because it could be interesting. Another photograph composition wise, I love the um, uh, analogous color. Notice how it's beautifully uh, arranged on the uh, frame in a very Zen way, lots of uh, horizontal lines, but then you have uh, the circle. It's a little bit off center. So it leaves room for the cast shadow. Um, and I think this is a series of paintings. Composition wise, don't look at the realism or uh, the blending. We're not gonna go for that. But composition wise, I love that the uh, tablecloth or the kitchen cloth or the cloth, it's not all the way underneath. It just creates a separation between the wood and then a different texture. Notice the border uh, behind, it's high, it's not very low. Um, and then I like the fact that it's in between. It's not a full fruit and then open. It's a fruit that it's, uh, you know, it's been cut and then someone wanted to peel it. And then there's the knife. It gives me the creeps, honestly. I, I just have a little bit of a, an issue with uh, knives. And I realize that a lot of people do too, so I don't feel weird. But uh, there's a knife, very neutral. There's a cast shadow, so it informs us that there's a uh, there's an edge on the. Uh, this is an extraordinary composition, if you ask me. Simple painting, extraordinary composition, off center. Um, it, it gets cropped diagonal of the uh, knife. Love this facing forward and what. Uh, makes the, the uh, fruit so outstanding is this periwinkle um, uh, wall on the background and uh, cast shadow just floods or spills on the floor and then or the ground or the surface and then also on the wall. Uh, color wise, it's a very um, beautiful composition, but balance centered. Uh, there's no um, uh, juggling here or trying to create something uh, I love this also up close, the cast shadow of the fruit, but then there is a shadow cast on the fruit. Boom, mind blown. Um, simple, very um, Giorgio Morandi, nice um, neutral tones and uh, very salmon-like, smaller fruit, no bells and, uh, and whistles here. Uh, it's just uh, allows us to really uh, savor the palette. So we don't have to uh, reinvent anything here or create something super original. This is, uh, this is incredible uh, because the color palette comes 
uh, forwards beautifully. And I love the nude tones, anything that feels background, um, that is background, but it's painted with, a, with colors that we associate with a different object. It's a win-win for the artist. Um, new tones, I think skin uh, or light skin. And then, but here's on the background. That's why it's so appealing. Um, two objects and notice how the composition works here. Uh, there's nothing that feels off um, frame. Be careful with weird positions uh, against things unless you wanna really crop it. So this is a, a, a very interesting um, composition because there's a lot of darkness that engulfs uh, the objects. So again, part of the objects, we don't know where they end. And that's the beauty of this composition. The shadow dissolves the fruit and the bowl. Uh, and, uh, and I put this one after because this is a way of doing something that's cropped that works. The mug, it's totally cropped on the uh, top of the painting uh, and it's off the page, but it doesn't feel off frame. I'm not saying off center because that's a different story. The fruit is off center, but the composition doesn't feel off frame. And what do you get? You get three masses of color arranged in a tri triangular way. The reddish um, notes on the fruit, the ultramarine on the mug, the whites and grades on the cloth. Insane. Um, Simple composition, look how the edges are treated. They're dissolving, they're soft. We don't have to uh, do a, a coloring. Uh, um, or, uh, ah, I'm just gonna scratch that, the beginning of that senten sentence. Um, simple uh, horizontal lines uh, anchor the composition, centered, uh, the light is the protagonist in this image if you ask me. Directional light, very strong, cast shadow. Um, same one right here. Um, and I'm going to go fast. I love this one. This is, part of, I would not, I don't know why I put it because this is way too ambitious. Full fruit, half fruit, and then glass with a neutral background. It's too much. But in case you want to incorporate something that's taller, so uh, notice that the grouping uh, has. Uh, um, uh, the, the integrity, I don't know, or it's well integrated. Uh, the tall object off center, the two fruits together uh, on the other side. But can we just please look at the border? I don't, I don't, I don't mind if I uh, uh, take 20 minutes uh, with this introduction because I just want to prepare uh, the mindset about composition and arrangement. There's nothing weird that's happening ar around the objects. There's nothing unbalanced or as if this was like off frame. Off frame and off balance are two different things. Um, so I think off frame, unless it is, it's, it's intentional, it's what we should raise uh, red flags about. Um, an example of two stages. I love when um, in fruits or in organic elements, we show the, the uh, I wouldn't say the passing of time, obviously it's not like the flowers, but here it's something full and something cracked. And then the fruit at the bottom. Uh, notice the contrast of color in temperature on the uh, table. And then again, the neutral raw umber like dark value on the background. So it just enhances the color. Um, and then uh, this one treated in a very loose way. I just brought it because it's horizontal uh, or landscape orientation, smaller fruit, but again, it's not off center. There's nothing weird about the fruit or even the cast shadow. It doesn't feel odd. Um, another beautiful example, we don't have to use a full fruit or one that it's open. I love that this is a wedged uh, slice of the pomegranate and that's it up close. Again, back a black background to enhance the color. That's a beautiful, uh, consider that as an example of um, something that can um, enhance uh, the composition. And then neutral grays, cool neutral grays below and uh, sprinkle kernels of pomegranate on those neutral, um, on the neutral gray. Great 
great composition. Ooh, this looks amazing. I'm just gonna stop right here. Good, 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 good. Beautiful, I love everything. And I'm just gonna get started. And uh, thank you for uh, putting up with uh, this uh, introduction um, after the introduction. Uh, oh, and then I just, um, I'm gonna be a little bit selfish right here, but uh, I, I just wanna show you uh, my composition. I just decided to do a couple of things. I'm gonna choose one fruit only, um, and I'm gonna move the fruit because I think there's too much white and not enough cast shadow. I decided to bring a different color temperature uh, background rather than dark because I, since it's a single fruit, I wanted something playful and I got inspired by one of the images that I showed you. So I'm just gonna move the fruit. I used a lamp because I wanted direct light um, because I wanna work on this next week. So that's why I don't know what the light's gonna look like next Wednesday. So I just brought a lamp and um, with uh, the, um, I chose a um, daylight light bulb that I have that, um, that I use in my studio just because I wanted the colors to not show a filter light, but any light may work. And I just put it on the side. So strong direction, directional light. I didn't want to deal with uh, tables, edges of tables or anything like that, just because I want to spend time talking about other stuff. I but I did put a plate underneath to sort of like frame it, support it, crown it, um, and give it uh, importance. Um, but yeah, the background will be will be a single color, and there will not be separation um, between horizontal and vertical, just to simplify it. And uh, that's the reason why I chose this. I'm gonna make it big. I'm gonna uh, make sure that I frame or I crowd the space. And now I'm just going to get started. And um, yeah, any, OK, that's good. So I don't have any uh, perfect. So I'm going to use charcoal. I need to uh, set or uh, find a place and a position that it's going to be comfortable for me. Um, if you have the fruit, um, I highly, highly recommend you do this live. Uh, even if you have the fruit, you can take a picture and see what a picture, the, what the picture looks like in the composition. Um, so it's a way of like uh, um, um, rehearsing the composition. But uh, you will get much more benefit from doing this live than from doing it from the photograph. Because uh, I just compare the photograph with live, and it's just uh, yeah, there's no comparison in regards of what color. So simplification, simplification. In my case, simplification means a circle for the fruit. And then I'm just gonna do the plate and see what that's gonna look like. I think I'm just gonna look at this. Yeah, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. I'm looking at how much space and also I was worried about the height because sometimes I kind of like to have much more space above. It just lets the composition breathe. And uh, it almost, we talked about it uh, during the face palm uh, exercise. Um, and I know at least one person that left a lot of space above the head. And it was almost an invitation to reflect having an open space in the painting, an open empty space in the painting that it's not contained. It's not just a, a way of uh, making the composition a little bit lighter in weight, but it's also a way of um, an invitation to uh, uh, loiter. Loiter, can I use this word? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, metaphor me metaphorically, obviously. Okay, I'm just getting too carried away with words. I'm just going to stop. So yeah, um, sometimes I bite more than I can chew. <laughs> All right, so I just continue. And then uh, I wanted to make my life simple just because I am uh, going to be talking and, uh, and also, um, yeah, so I just want to make, uh, 
make sure that, and my paper is big. My format is 12 by 16. I would not do this 12 by 16 if I were um, following or being part of an audience just because uh, I would feel more comfortable with nine by 12, perhaps, uh, considering the time. And it just depends on many factors, but uh, I'm using 12 by 16 because it's larger. So um, I think hopefully, you know, it's easier with this um, stuff that I have that I have set up. All right, so, and then uh, the pomegranate uh, shape wise, we can simplify it into a circle. But obviously, once I go in, there is one part of the pomegranate that uh, is the part, I think, I'm just going to move it. No, I was going to say it's the part that it was attached to the, to the tree. It's not the part that it was attached to the, to the tree. It's actually the other part. Um, so um, I'm just going to do that. And I, I purposely, uh, I went to the store and... Uh, I mean, this, this fruit is not considered exotic, okay? Um, I, um, um, I was born in Spain. <laughs> I sound like a boring person. Um, uh, anyhow, I was born in a very rural area, and this was used to be uh, given to animals as feed. Uh, and now we pay like uh, three dollars and 50 cents uh, for a piece of, uh, anyhow, well, uh, this, that's not part of the webinar, obviously. But um, I was just saying that, yeah, I went to the store and I got two. Uh, this is a luxury fruit right now, you guys. I consider this a luxury fruit. And um, yeah, I chose, that's the reason why I, let, let's just go back to what I intended to say, which was that I chose uh, this just because I like the way, the way it ended. It's sort of like uh, empty, tiny um, cylindric shape. Um, it, it, almost like a weird navel. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about that and it's probably gross, but it's kind of, um, it's, it's representative or we can associate it more to a pomegranate. So I wanted to, oh, I selected a fruit that I thought um, it would give me less problems uh, to paint uh, in a way that uh, was easy to read. Um, not that I'm concerned about that, but since I was able to curate among a little box of pomegranates that was at the store, it's not even massive anymore. Um, I remember, and it's, uh, I'm not going to go back to uh, I was born in. Uh, this was just a few years ago. I would say, what, three years ago? Perhaps um, a pre uh, um, uh, Dantesque times before 2016 when we had the real president. Maybe things were different and we had more pomegranates in the store. Uh, who knows? Who knows what affects um, the fact that now there are less pomegranates. Um, and I don't want to be political, but. Maybe. Leo, I looked, I looked up where most pomegranates are from, thinking maybe Spain is, you know, like the biggest producer oh. of them. And that's why they were so cheap uh, or inexpensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it looks like India and Iran. Yeah producers worldwide, but then they said good commercial quality pomegranates come from Turkey, Spain, Israel, Morocco, Peru, and the United States, California, and Arizona. So <laughs> maybe we just live in a... Maybe what? Maybe we just live in a very expensive city. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll look up why they're so expensive this year. Maybe there was something about... Um, the rain or lack thereof of last year. Maybe, and that would be interesting actually. This, I, I, I love learning about all this stuff. So thank you, Jen, for doing this because, sure. um, yeah, I, there's no, I mean, I don't think this was imported, but maybe there's an import and then there's all this uh, war with, uh, what is it called? The, not the taxes, the, whatever that's called. Oh, I thought you were going to say the <laughs> war in Armenia. 
Um, <laughs> I mean, that's a whole nother thing. Okay, yeah. it looks like we have something from Julie. She said, pomegranates in California are just ripening. So we are just starting the season. Maybe that's why they're not in so okay. much. Okay. That would make sense too, because I know like, you know, strawberries are a really, you know, big, we produce a lot of strawberries here in California, but if you buy them in December, you know, that's insane. <laughs> They're insanely expensive. So right. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll yeah. look. It up. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, thanks, um, Julie. Um, and Jen, but yeah, that's the reason. That's probably the reason why uh, I can tell you that Kian, um, you know, this is this is their fruit. I think this is possibly. I think this is the fruit of Iran. I mean, the national fruit. I I don't know, but I I didn't have time to actually find out if this is the national fruit of uh, a country. It should be, but uh, yeah. And th that's a. I mean, I remember at least in Spain and where I grew up. Uh, uh, pomegranate trees would uh, grow right next to this on, on the street. I mean, on the street, not on the street, I would say, when we, you would leave the city or the town or the village and you would just drive, uh, you could see pomegranate trees just in the wild. Um, not anymore now, um, not anymore because they, they were just uh, taken out and stuff. But I just remember, that, I mean, there, this is something that we could do or, uh, uh, the pomegranate flower, um, I used to make toys with the pomegranate flower. I used to make pipes and pretend I was smoking. So can you upload a photo of a pomegranate flower? Because I used to get a <laughs> stick. Yeah. <laughs> and you're right. It is the national fruit of Iran. Okay. Yeah, Sorry, Leo, to... what was the... yeah, go ahead. No, no, I used to make pipes with the, I love the, the... I love the fruit, you know, I, I just love that. I mean, I'm sorry, the flower. I love the flower. The national fruit of England is an apple. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I think that's a surprises me, but maybe our English friends are like, of course. Yeah. I'm the national fruit of the United States and it's not listed. No, <laughs> I keep looking. <laughs> Interesting. Maybe someone knows, or maybe we can have some guesses. <laughs> yeah, I know. I would have never thought that was the case. All right, so I'm having a lot of fun um, shading. And time-wise, it's good because um, what we want here is arrange and uh, simplify and then uh, yeah, make sure that we're okay with the composition. So, um, and what I did, or what I'm doing right now, because the pomegranate, the skin is depending on the pomegranate, but what I love, it's like, it's quite dark. Uh, it, it's quite dark. So I just use the side of the charcoal and I, um, yeah, I darken the skin a little bit more. Yeah. I found out the blueberry is the national fruit of the United States. And mm. yeah, I was surprised too. And any guess as to the vegetable? The, no. Uh, wait, I, potato. So I think it's going to surprise you. I would have thought something more humble, but it's the artichoke. Wow. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is, I, I, it, it's awesome. It makes me sad that it, it should be sort of like, I would feel more patriotic about these things than about other stuff. <laughs> I think that I'm pretty sure that there are festivals, artichoke festivals and stuff, but I've never heard of them. So uh, it would be fun, actually. I love the artichoke flower. That's also strange. Is it because it's native um, of um, here? Yeah, and I already. I I would guess. Um... Oh my 
gosh, it has Nash national dress and there's <laughs> there's pictures of people in what looks like Halloween costumes of like cowboys. Oh lordy. I hope this website is <laughs> right. It's gonna be really embarrassing. Um Oh, this, I just love, uh, this is, it's working. Um, it's working, meaning uh, that the main reason why we uh, decided to go uh, and do a still life, it's because uh, a still life of all the subjects, it's the most meditative. Um, so I just feel uh, already uh, the weight of my shoulders, the, the, the weight on my shoulders lifting meaning the worry, the worries, the anxiety and uh, uh, being glued to the news and stuff like that. Um, it's a testament on how creativity um, makes us free. Uh, my gosh, that sounds like a cheap uh, preacher, but um, yeah, I, I, I just feel like that way. And notice that what I did was on the oval shape, I just continued um, and connected both because I do so many strange and weird, weird things with anything that's oval or um, foreshortened. So I wanted to make sure that the curvature um, uh, reinforced um, a continuity and it, it didn't look like too flat or something like that. I know this line is gonna change a lot, but I'm ready for my wash. I'm really happy about this. I'm happy about uh, the composition and sometimes uh, simplicity brings out um, other uh, aspects on a painting uh, or opens up uh, other um, paths or invites you to enjoy different things in the painting. Um, it just depends, you know, complexity like the painting of the knife with the tablecloth and the table. And I don't know what it was on the table. It didn't look like a kernel and the open skin um, cut and then pulled open. There was so much there that uh, I feel like that comes first. Some of the uh, examples that I showed you have a very intricate uh, light composition. So that also comes first. Um, so depending on how simple or how complex the composition, your composition is, uh, you'll uh, be able to invite the viewer to enjoy color or to enjoy texture or to enjoy narrative or um, yeah, um, or just be contemplative. Okay, so I am just gonna start washing and I keep leaving my brushes outside of the, let me see. I keep leaving my brushes outside of the bowls, the mason jars and they get hard and I just have to use that uh, solution. I have to order more gen, um, but um, yeah, it, it just gets, uh, so darker to lighter, uh, what am I gonna do here? I'm, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna simplify the colors. And what I'll do right now, I have a very, very uh, monochromatic palette or the typical palette. I'm just gonna, my feet are showing and I'm so sorry if this that's, um, so um, I have the whites right here, two whites, uh, titanium and zinc. Uh, reason why I'm using zinc, it's because it's very transparent and I may um, use it for um, glazing later. Uh, a medium gray and two blacks, cold black and uh, paints, which is called paints gray and uh, the warm black Van Dyke Brown. All the browns right here, um, raw umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and uh, ecru. And then the two colors that we call the uh, light neutrals, but we should find a, a different name, the uh, neutrals of light, maybe. Uh, anyhow, so pink, uh, light pink and light blue, because sometimes you want to create a change in um, light temperature, and these colors work so well for that. And I know that I'm going to uh, use other tones. Oops. But um, I'm so sorry about this. But uh, but yeah, I just wanted to start with this. And I'm going to simplify um, the colors right now. I have warm and I have cold. 
So rather than just trying to make a turquoise or what looks like a quinacridone color, it's, uh, I was trying to find out what kind of color the skin is. It's a quinacridone base color. Um, I'm just gonna go for um, the burnt sienna, uh, the reddish brown, and then I'll just use uh, some um, uh, white, I guess. Uh, I'll use turpentine for this and maybe some gray. And then I'll use uh, the light blue on the background. And that's gonna be it. Uh, so two, oops, sorry. Two liquids, I'm using uh, mineral spirits uh, for the wash and then to clean the brushes in between paint. And then uh, the medium, which has a little bit of um, poppy seed oil and also a little bit of medium, uh, well, synthetic medium. It's very thick, so we'll see. But right now I just, to, for the wash, I just need to, I'm using the big brush. I need to use the big brush and I'll use the burn, uh, burn sienna. Ugh. And then I'll just go dark. And then burn sienna. Maybe I'll just use burn sienna and a little bit of the pink. How's that? So what is a wash? A wash is a layer that we apply uh, on the painting to transition from dry to wet. Uh, the function of the wash is very specific. It allows us to prime the surface and then uh, also seal uh, the charcoal or anything that we added. Um, so yeah, uh, generally speaking or traditionally, um, uh, washes are done in one single color, but um, with this, I just create a few variations uh, just because I wanna, uh, I wanna hit the ground running. <laughs> um, I was trying to look for um, Rumi uh, poems uh, with pomegranate references, and I thought I would just find a trove of poetry with pomegranate um, uh, references and metaphors, but I didn't. There was only one, I only found one poem by Rumi the laughter, I think it's called the laughter of pomegranates. And um, yeah, I was a little disappointed because, you know, he was so amazing in uh, creating all these sensuous um, poems about love and desire. And uh, that I thought um, that poem was gonna be, uh, yeah, I thought that poem was just gonna be all about the juices and the kisses and the lips and the red and, but no, it wasn't about that. I don't even know what it was about. Oh my gosh, I shouldn't say that. All right, so I'm just gonna bring the light blue. That, that was enough, the wash for the pomegranate and I just did a little bit of high and low and that's it. Uh, and then um, just doing the blue next, because uh, in regards of like darker to lighter, I didn't identify three values. The darker is on the pomegranate, the medium is on the background, and the lighter is on the plate. So that's why um, I'm doing this consciously and trying to follow an order and a strategy and, uh, and darker to lighter works for me. Um, yeah, so Morris Graves, uh, I think that was his name, Morris Graves, um, the Northern California uh, painter that I reference and I, uh, that we reference. Uh, I just, he was a self taught artist, and um, I just love the paintings. There's so, there, there's so much uh, simplicity and stillness. Um, and the one that uh, we used as a cover um, is just so beautiful. Um, and I keep, you know, I was reflecting on how to describe a painting without using the word beautiful uh, constantly. Because that's, that's always um, 
ready to come out <laughs> when we see something touching and incredible. And with his paintings, knowing that there was more than just the aesthetic that was involved, um, I feel like uh, that simplicity takes another uh, another dimension. He was also interested in defining beauty and um, and using art to um, to define beauty. And I just feel like the way he uh, used color and composition. Um, he just created um, a, a series of um, uh, vignettes in which um, you can admire uh, through this uh, humble approach and quietness, um, a, a really um, elegant um, the sense of beauty, I guess. So that's what I, what I took from that painting. Because when you, when you think pomegranates, um, and I see paintings, there's so many commercial, there's so much commercial stuff out there. And it's all about pinks and reds and, and out of the tube, it's intensity. And um, I just feel like that is uh, not really conveying the sophistication of the fruit. It's just using color again as a crutch, as, as if the color was um, the most important part because we associate pomegranate with juice and th this very intense, I think the peels of the pomegranate were used as a dye, um, natural dye in, in Iran, actually. Some of the uh, textiles were um, dyed um, with the skins of pomegranate. Uh, still today. Um, and then I'm just gonna go for the white. So that's why I loved, uh, I, I, I'm gonna use only turpentine. So turpentine, no, mineral spirits. So I don't wanna use white paint right now because I don't wanna have anything uh, uh, wet, anything white and wet um, underneath my layers. So I'll just use turpentine and I'll seal it uh, with that. Um, I use the rag to uh, empty out, carve uh, some light. It doesn't erase, but you can just uh, take some out. And that's my wash and I'm extremely uh, content with that. It doesn't need anything else. And I'm just gonna bring the um, um, turquoise um, in a different way. We'll see what that color ends up being, but um, I'm happy about accomplishing a wash that does what I needed, which was to um, prime the paper, seal the charcoal, period. Um, I use paint that had very, has very thin consistency in the sense of more um, uh, mineral spirits and a little bit of paint. And I let the charcoal guide me. The charcoal is not just to um, uh, give ourselves a medal and, and, uh, because we've done a good job. The charcoal, in, the main function of the charcoal is to just uh, give us uh, a sense of the order in which we uh, could apply the paint. So I, guide, I guided myself through the charcoal because this had more charcoal. I mean, also uh, the cast shadow. Uh, there was no charcoal outside, but this is a little bit darker. And then I did the plate. So let the charcoal guide you when you apply the wash. This is where we are right now, wash. We had uh, very interesting conversations about how do you know when it's a wash and it's a first note? Uh, what's, what's the exact moment? There is not an exact uh, precise point where I could say before this stroke, it was wash and after this stroke, it was first notes. Um, it's sort of like a general idea and each painting will have uh, a, different, uh, a different point. It, it's not an exact, um, place, it's more of a general uh, assessment. Uh, so for me, this makes it a wash because it's very transparent and very sheer and it feels like a watercolor and I didn't apply uh, any color masses yet. Um, and it did the function that I intended it to do, which was again for, um, I forgot the number of times that I mentioned it, but uh, seal the paper, um, prime the paper, seal the charcoal. All right, so I'm gonna go to first notes and 
uh, this is actually working um, unexpectedly. I wasn't sure how I was going to manage the time um, between the introduction uh, to composition and the wash, but it gives me uh, a little bit of time to uh, squeeze the first notes before the first hour, which is ideally, and depending on the painting, what we want to do. And I just need to get another. I'm going to switch brushes, medium brush, and then um, I'm going to also switch liquids. I'm going to use now the medium. What's a medium? A medium, um, it's a carrier of paint that allows mostly to uh, disperse the pigment out of the tube in a more fluid way. And also um, it has a very specific um, technical function, which is um, to either speed up the drying of the paint or slow it down. So again, the two functions of mediums um, are to uh, become a, a, a carrier that facilitates fluidity. So it's easier to spread and create strokes. And depending on what medium we use, uh, help us speed up or slow down or keep the same um, drying um, uh, agent or dry, not agent, drying time. <laughs> um, to, to make it a little bit more complicated, uh, I, could, I could split or separate or categorize that aspect into two kinds of liquids, mediums and oils. Um, in essence, they both do the same thing. They are both carriers of paint and um, uh, facilitate the fluidity. Uh, the oil has less of a component of drying or um, making it wet longer. Depending on the oil, you will get uh, dry, drier paint or a little bit longer uh, or wet paint much longer, but it's not as pronounced as the synthetic mediums. Um, we go to the synthetic mediums when we really want to see dramatic change in the way the paint dries or stays wet. Um, having said that, I like to use mediums first and most painters, they don't use oil at all, even though this is oil painting, just because mediums are so specific and there are so many kinds that what ends up, ha ends up happening is that artists um, just uh, try different ones and then they uh, end up using the one that um, makes it uh, or feels more comfortable to them. What I do is I, I like to mix a little bit of oil with the medium so it's not just all, all medium but you can do this all with medium or with oil. Um, all right, so darker to lighter. And how do we do color matching? You have to be careful of not uh, painting by association. And that's the biggest um, hurdle um, or the most wired thing we have in our brains in order to, or that uh, we constantly tap into to paint. We use colors by association and not by observation. I, we say this time and time again. Um, we think of a tree, the tree is green. So we use green to paint the canopy. But is it really green? And what kind of green is it? Um, so uh, the green that we associated with and the green that it actually uh, happens have nothing to do, most likely. So pomegranate, we think um, this uh, quinacridone color, this almost like purplish tone. Is it really? Um, maybe some parts will be like that, but not everything. So what I'm gonna do with a medium brush right now is I'm gonna switch to first notes. And what I'll do is apply the darker areas that I see that um, um, in color. So this and then this one right here. Um, a way to test the color is when you put some color on um, the bristles and then you go against, um, you go against the actual surface uh, and you test it. So pretend this is the pomegranate skin and then I would just go next to it. 
Um, also, what people do is uh, to get a piece of paper and do um, a little color sample on the piece of paper, on the edge of the piece of paper. And then you take the piece of paper right next to the fruit, um, and then you compare it. Um, so right now, because it's first notes, I'm doing an approximate read. So um, I just focus on the darker areas where I see them. And what are first notes? First notes are layers of paint that have a little bit more consistency than the wash. And they um, represent the uh, uh, foundation of uh, the color fields or the masses in the painting. So it's a simplified um, area, colored area on the painting that will, uh, will allow us to have a base so we can just uh, create highs and lows later when we move to second notes. So think color masses or color fields, think foundation, think base, um, and that's, think a little bit more consistency, um, but that's the function of the first note is to just get us um, that color base uh, that will allow us to create um, variations when we move on to the next layer, the second notes. So what I'm doing is I'm not really containing it too much. I have to squint my eyes, but I just apply it in a very, um, in a very mosaic-like way, pixelated. And I try to see where, uh, if there's anything neutral. So um, yeah, there is. And then the bottom, what's the bottom like? It's gray. And I think it looks like a cool gray. So I'm just going to do that. Yeah, well, maybe not. A little bit of the, uh, I'm going to warm up that gray. Yeah. So again, pixelation, darker to lighter. This is a little bit darker. And uh, then what? So there is a reflection of the fabric color on the plate. And I need to start bringing sort of like turquoise. So I'm just going to go in front of the camera and bring two, uh, uh, two Ziplocs. And we uh, recommend when you organize your colors in the, uh, don't, don't just have them like all tossed in because it's going to be hard to. So these are all my reds. Reds and purples are right in this uh, Ziploc. The non-essential reds and purples. And these are the non-essential uh, blues. Uh, so over time, um, I've been collecting, um, buying. Uh, I like to shop color. So, um, yeah, I got this uh, radiant turquoise. I got a radiant turquoise. How about that? So I, I'm just gonna use it. And if you don't have it, you possibly use a little bit of, um, I would say cerulean, uh, cerulean blue if you have it, and a tad of green, just a little bit, uh, or even a, 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 a small amount of yellow, and that will sort of like break up the coolness of the blue and create something uh, a little bit um, a little bit warmer because turquoise you know it's hard to make it with uh, certain blues but if you have a cerulean with a tad of green or a tad of like yellow first you can create something turquoise like I mean I don't even know if anyone needs turquoise but I'm just saying how I would do it so paints gray seems to be the black um, that I'm going to use for this painting. And um, yeah, so I'm just uh, blocking out. Uh, so think in, in terms of like blocking out. So no, no blending or details right now. I'm just blocking out um, uh, the color. And what I'm doing is I'm going over, I pixelated the spots on the pomegranate and I just created a color mass on the side. And I should probably do the darker version right here, which is, I'm going to do this again with, um, oops, with uh, the cool black. And I'll do the uh, area underneath. Do we have to match the color? No, we don't. 
um, the value is more important than color. So right now what I'm doing, uh, I need some more yellow there. So I'm gonna bring some yellow ochre. I don't wanna bring the full yellow. And that creates a nice, uh, yeah. All right, so I'm just doing uh, darker areas, darker to lighter. Uh, uh, things that uh, we, we, we don't talk about, um, the trembling of the hand, uh, the pulse, and we feel like sometimes um, uh, we struggle to keep things um, steady. And I would say this, uh, steady is not our ally here. So I embrace the trembling of the hand. Uh, it, it's just gonna make the painting much better because ultimately what we want is in each painting, we wanna see, uh, we, we wanna imagine, imagine the hand who did it. So if everything's like too polished and we remove that human component, uh, to me, the magic is gone, uh, gone. So for me, that trembling, it's actually what I look for. It just makes me feel like the painter just did it. I could be watching something that painted a hundred years ago, but there's a sense of uh, uh, being present. And um, there's a sense of, um, yeah, uh, being present that gives me chills. I could be in front of a painting um, and see a brush stroke and feel moved because I, I imagine uh, the hand who did it. And I, it doesn't matter that the person did it a hundred years ago. It's just, to me, it looks fresh. Um, all right, so let's just focus on this. And uh, I'm just gonna bring that turquoise color right now in the background. and uh, turquoise with some of the blue. And again, I'm doing first notes. I'm using the medium brush. And I start doing things around, um, around uh, the edges, because there's a lot of space and I will do that later, but I don't want to get distracted or uh, waste too much time. Um, I want the background to help me define uh, the shape. So in that sense, uh, brushstroke direction, what am I doing with the brushstroke direction? Uh, I'm not being a specific. This is not first notes, generally speaking, it's not the time when I would look for brushstroke direction and see if I'm doing it right. Um, it's mostly um, the idea is to just dump color on the painting in order to start piecing together, uh, creating a mosaic of the color mass that we want to have for, uh, underneath in order to be able to work it. So naturally the color direction right now, it's, it's not important. If anything, um, I would say it should not have a, a, a specific direction. So I'm hatching it. Uh, they're not super big strokes, but I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily um, um, concentrating on uh, creating a very flat, even uniform area. Um, think of that. And if you find yourself doing it, um, question, uh, question that. Are you doing it because that's the way you've always done it when you paint it? Or are you doing it because that's the way that you know you are gonna do it like you're set with that? Because uh, most likely the answer will be that um, we're doing this because we've always done it and uh, we've never uh, done it uh, or tried anything different. And then we keep doing it. Well, the. The danger uh, or the risk there is that unfortunately, um, and I, I, I probably, I should speak for myself, but the, the painting education that I had when I was a kid, it wasn't just, it wasn't great. I mean, I was lucky that um, I went to a, 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 an artist studio. Um, I started going there when I was seven years old, but 
I don't know. Um, we use like uh, oil pastel because the, the guy didn't want kids to make messes. So that, that tells you, okay? That alone that tells you. So I appreciate it because I was able to uh, um, uh, create uh, visual work. But it's an indication already of um, where we come from. And the, the, the thing is that we come from uh, more of an illustration uh, mindset, you know, color, 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 color. Paint is coloring and, and it's not. So anyhow, um, hopefully you're too engaged or engaged enough so you can uh, focus on the work. But yeah, my point is that don't worry about uh, trembling, um, not having a steady pulse or um, what kind of like brush stroke you should have in first notes. It's not important. And um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to switch to the big brush oh, and, uh, and see if I can, because right now I want to just uh, stretch. And that's why a medium is for um, to stretch the paint, stretch the paint, meaning, you know, to just kind of like use the medium to uh, disperse the pigment. See, uh, that's, that's, that's the function, one of the functions of the medium. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at right now, time-wise. All right, Jen, so any, uh, did you, what kind of rabbit holes did you go down to or into? <laughs> Okay, so I couldn't find um, the uh, origin story of the artichoke. Um, and then <laughs> <laughs> I was on that page. Um, I started to question everything because I was like, oh, this page says that there is no official fruit of the United States. And if you probably pick an orange because it grows in Florida and California. So I don't know. Um, how much any of it is true <laughs> and I couldn't find official fruit I mean official vegetable of the United States anywhere else so maybe someone was just having fun <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy it's a serious question I'm so happy that you're yeah well, the best part was that it said it said it was an artichoke and then it said to be precise it's a French artichoke and I was like wait what <laughs> Can't we just have something that's our own? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, we have the sunflowers. Are the sunflowers? Yes. Yes. I mean, yes. Unfortunately, Thank they're not. Goodness. Are they? Are they uh, the flowers of watch? You know, can you just find out what what country has the sunflowers as their national flower? Yes, our national flower evidently is the rose, according to some website. Okay. Um, no, that the national flower of Virginia is the dogwood. <laughs> the dogwood. And not the national flower, sorry, the state flower. Oh. Um, Virginia is the dogwood, which I think is so pretty. And that's a state, it's the state tree as well. Oh my gosh. Okay, so, all right. Let me look deeper into, okay. wait, does I have to look up? The, oh, sunflower country, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna, I think, should I introduce the white? I am a little nervous about the white, but um, up to me, first notes. Um, yeah, I don't like to leave anything blank, so I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it, and then um, I'm just gonna bring some of that. Um, so this is the stage where, you know, we panic or we feel, oh my gosh, this looks like beep. Um, and, but the thing is that uh, a painting is uh, a, a slow process. <laughs> that should be the first thing that should be told to anyone uh, who wants to take on painting, especially uh, in the 21st century. Painting is slow. It's a slow process. So, um, which is why this is so good for us and so calming because it's, it's kind of like encourages to slow down. Um, 
And that means that perhaps at this stage, things may not look the way we uh, expect or what we think of, um, but it's a very preliminary uh, stage. I just uh, uh, said earlier that the first notes are foundational, the foundation. So I think it's very important to just, uh, yeah, to just make sure that we know what kind of expectation we should have at each state. And um, I, I, I'm not gonna start judging of this, if this, does it look like a, a pomegranate? Does it look like an onion? Um, the plate is wonky and um, it's, it's not the time. I'm just setting up the color fields and then uh, the first notes is possibly the most, um, uh, the most dangerous um, stage just because it's when we start making assumptions about our work. And 99.9 um, .9 of the time, those assumptions are completely unrealistic and based on judgment. Um, and you know where that leads, uh, you know, frustration and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just applying these things, I'm blocking it out. I'm not thinking what this is supposed to look like or what it looks or how it's painted and not at all. So um, I, I do have to put first notes on the wash right here. So I'm not done with first notes yet. And uh, perhaps it would be a good idea. Where are my purples? I'm just gonna bring a couple of colors that we've been adding. If you don't have them, you can use red and you can use uh, maybe a little bit of uh, blue. I don't know, but um, so I'm gonna use alizarin crimson, which after all the tutorials that we've done, I personally discovered how important alizarin crimson um, is. Uh, it's it's a more important red than um, cadmium red. Yeah, so it makes great purples. Um, it, it's such a intense color. Uh, yeah, it's a better red. So I think a lizard and crimson. It's just gonna be a lizard and crimson. I mean, I could just if you have it, great. If you don't have it, how can you make a lizard and crimson? So maybe if you have cadmium red and you have a uh, burnt sienna, you can start by toning down that cadmium brilliance, tone it down. And then if you add a tad of the French ultramarine, perhaps that will also pull it back, pull it back and create a certain level of coolness. So that's what I would do. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. So I'm just going to bring that pomegranate uh, reddish tone in certain spots. And it's this is just a lizard and crimson straight up <laughs> with some of the pigment that I have in my um, in uh, my brush. Uh, if you don't have a lizard and crimson, you add it to your to-do list, not even your shopping list. Uh, you must have it. <laughs> Order it, um, go shop. Um, if uh, you have an art store nearby, um, it's, I don't care if you never use it. It's such a glorious uh, tone, better than cadmium red. And if you're watching from the future and you're saying, well, you know, I don't have it, I cannot do this. Yes, you can. You can um, create a purplish note. Again, what I would do, cadmium red, uh, burnt sienna, which is the reddish brown, combine them both. So it just uh, creates something that it's uh, a little less um, screeching and then bring some of uh, French ultramarine or even some Payne's gray, uh, which is a really cold black uh, to pull it back. And you can, you're gonna get something um, that's gonna have a really nice purplish uh, note. So the, um, I think that's a lizard and crimson is, let me just check. 
comes in from somewhere. Let me check the things. I think so. Yeah, I think it's uh, synthetic. I'm not sure. Um, it is. I have it up now. Okay. <clears throat> is it synthetic or is it like a? It is. Oh, it yes, is. it's synthetic. Thanks. And, yeah, the vehicle is refined linseed oil. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. So um, I'm using some pink. Again, uh, this is a color that we keep using in any sort of like subject. Pinks, the light pink, uh, uh, it's called Radiant Red in Gamblin, but other companies may have different uh, names. And I just added a little bit of Ecru because uh, on my pomegranate, there's some Ecru and then it was still too brilliant. So what I did was uh, to bring a little bit of uh, raw umber to, uh, to, to tame it, to tame it down to, yeah. And I'm just doing the lighter part of the pomegranate. Oh, this is so much fun. Yeah, it's, this, is, um, this is starting to uh, come along. Um, so this is another example of why it's so difficult to make uh, first notes and second notes and, and know exactly when you are. Because I almost treated the pomegranate in, in a way, uh, sort of like second, note, second notes like, because I brought different variations of second notes the um, alizarin crimson and then some of the pink in a true first note fashion this would have only one single color and it would be painted almost flat and then from that i would just pull out uh, other colors within that range so even though i still consider i'm on first notes this is uh, something that merges first notes and second notes if that makes uh, any sense. Uh, why is that? Why am I doing it? In a way, I just feel like uh, I want to be more efficient with the time. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm already uh, bringing variations. Okay, so I am done with my first notes. And I'm just going to take a minute break and assess uh, what's going to be my next step. I'm going to switch to second notes. What is second notes? Second notes um, is considered, I consider it like a painting, painting. With second notes, what I do is I would go to each of the foundational base colors, the color fields, the, the blocks, uh, the mosaic pieces that I just did with first notes. Um, and what I would do then, it's just two things create variations within them. And by variations, I mean variations of light and variations of temperature. It will be within the same color, but, or the same color family, but with um, a, a slight changes in variations. And the second thing that happens in second notes is that I integrate edges with its two sides or their two sides. So this is very round right now. So I know that there's a little bit of a, a bumpiness uh, on the skin. Um, it just feels not smooth. So with second notes, as I apply higher uh, and lower values, I would just also um, work, mold, redefine, recreate, not recreate, redefine the edges. So that's why second notes is the most important part. And uh, how do I know I'm uh, in second notes? Um, I, I know because I added a base color everywhere. And, um, and um, yeah, I think I'm sort of like ready to start creating variations. And also the edges uh, need to be worked on. And possibly that's the thing that makes the second notes more, look more than second note, notes, the edges. Um, the closing gaps um, between color fields, creating variations on the quality of that edge, uh, carving or expanding 
this is all a task that happens during second nodes. All right, I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna switch to, or bring a small brush. I think for the, yeah, I'll use a small brush. I'll, I'll use a combination of medium and small, but for now I'll just use a small. Um, and what am I gonna do? I'm gonna use the medium and then I'm, I think I'm gonna work by location. So my strategy will be, so it's 1220, I have um, some time, so 40 minutes. What I'll do is I'm gonna try to, no, I'm gonna do it differently. Cause I was gonna say, I'm gonna go for the pomegranate and then that's it. But um, I'll do something else instead. I'll work on the peripheral areas and then I'll go on the pomegranate. Cause I feel like, um, we have a tendency of getting sequestered by the main subject and then the rest drifts away. And I usually encourage to build the secondary elements or the elements that are um, the supporting character, supporting, supportive, supporting characters. Um, so then we don't have to work as much on the uh, main subject and um, yeah, it's just a more efficient way. So I'm gonna work on the shadow. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work on the shadow, on the plate and under the plate. Boom, that's gonna be my work right now. So I see a double shadow, there's a reflection. So what I'm gonna do first of all is to bring, I think that is Van Dyke Brown. So I'll just work on that. I'll give myself a few minutes, but uh, I'm glad I paused and I came up with a strategy. Painting is about strategizing and it's about time management. And it sounds so dry and boring and, and uh, it's not a good um, sell, but that is what's about. It's about thinking. Mostly. Um, I try to shift the focus on thinking what I want rather than just being behind uh, the results. All right, there's a little bit of a quinacridone shadow here with some white. So I'm just gonna bring that edge. Ooh, yeah. Um, Nice. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, already, this is just kind of like, um, again, that meditative uh, aspect of a still life that we so desperately need it. So I'm just going to go ahead. I love the, the diffusion of the shadow. So perhaps right now, what I'll do is I'll just work on that edge. Again, what I said about second notes, it's not just about, it's not just about um, bringing variations, but to assess and analyze the edge quality. So on the cast shadow, the edge quality is ridiculously sophisticated. It's sharper as it's closer to the fruit and more diffused as it, um, uh, goes away from it. I love those uh, uh, changes. Oh, there is rhythm in the shadow. And what is rhythm? Rhythm, oh, what is rhythm? Um, so for me, I define rhythm as uh, 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 harmonious, uh, organic uh, uh, change. Uh, so it, it, it's not repetitive, there's no repetition. It's sort of like a gradual and organic change on something. So for me, the rhythm on the shadow means that two things happen. Sh uh, edges are sharper, closer, and then they fade gradually. And then the value also is darker underneath and it fades gradually. And the word is gradually with rhythm. 
and it's so good to do this because uh, we have a tendency of only filling up colors or filling up shapes with color. The concept of rhythm, uh, uh, it's something that we don't, um, unfortunately, we haven't had the opportunity when we were kids um, to be um, told what it was. Um, we, we think for me, I mean, we think rhythm uh, in a musical way, in the sense it's kind of like repetition. But for me, rhythm, it's uh, as, a, as a design element or as a visual element, it's not uh, based on repetition. Um, repetition for me, it's pattern. Uh, rhythm is, I'll define, I'll find a better, a better explanation. But yeah, that's why the cast shadows are so beautiful to paint. Um, um, oh, I think I'm just running out of battery. On the phone, I'll just uh, plug it in. Okay. I think that's good. Can I just do that? Yeah. Uh, all right. So, yeah, I'm just working on that plate. Uh, I'm starting to bring white. I squint my eyes. I'm uh, switching between um, the uh, medium brush and the small brush. And I just did the uh, fading of the shadow. There's a sense of something there being a little bit lighter. Maybe I, I should bring the uh, zinc white. Make sure that's a little bit too much. Because the light from the, um, the plate, there's some light that goes in. Ah, I know, because I have the light from the window hitting in one direction and the light from the lamp. So there are multiple directions and I can see that um, on how the shadows are cast on the plate. Okay, so um, let me just fade that a little bit more. Barely any paint, uh, creating smoky uh, edges. And I just feel like I need to darken certain areas a tad more. So I'm really enjoying this, uh, this process right now. This is to be a little bit darker. I'm bringing some, some darkness, but I love the fact that the, uh, the color is not contained. Uh, Maurice Graves, Maurice Graves, I think, yeah, that's the name. Uh, he was self-taught. There's something um, almost um, childlike in his paintings, but it doesn't come across as immature. Uh, it comes across as whimsical and soothing. So I also love that, for example, on the painting of the tray, the tray doesn't really follow uh, uh, the quote unquote, right pers perspective. It, it's painted um, like, a, like an old Chinese um, uh, rolled up painting, you know, where, where all, there was no perspective, everything followed the same vanishing point. I mean, uh, each of these things followed a different vanishing point. Um, yeah, I don't know what I was going with that, but um, yeah, I was just like uh, going with style perhaps. Um, I don't know, it'll come up. All right, so the shadow underneath, and I feel like that shadow underneath, I need more of, um, I'm running out of the turquoise. Where is it? I'm just gonna bring, again, I'm doing second notes and I have a plan. I have a plan and my plan is to work on the peripheral areas because I know that if I go to the pomegranate, this is what I'm gonna be doing. Paint and paint and paint and add and stir the pot and create, uh, um, create, what is it called? Um, uh, it's a, 
It's a French name, Jen, you can help me with that. It's a French name for a potato leek um, soup. It's, it's potato leek soup in American, but in French, mm. right. <laughs> it's potato leek, but it's a French dish. Denise would probably be screaming behind the screen right now. Um, oh my gosh, it's in the t- <laughs> Ah! Yes, Vichy Suas, thank you so much, Denise. <laughs> Vichy Suas, thank you. <laughs> I hope you're laughing, Denise. <laughs> uh, Vichy Suas, uh, whatever that's pronounced. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, that was a uh, uh, Catalonia, it's really close to uh, the French border. So, Vichy Suas was something that we grew up with <laughs> potato leek is super cheap to do and the ingredients couldn't be any cheaper and it's so uh it's so delicious so um yeah and but it has this consistency of not being liquid so i just wanted to bring that up because when we paint when we overwork something the colors feel very vichy uh kind of like um <laughs> soupy <laughs> very porridge like so uh well later uh, when we kind of like exchange um ideas and comments you let me know if you uh, find yourselves um stirring the pot with the pomegranate because i'm trying to avoid that right now i know myself and it would be adding layer over layer over layer and then i would say to myself well it's too wet you know i just uh i need to let it dry i i I told myself, um, uh, okay, what's going on? Hold on, you guys. I told my, I, I tell myself this all the time. It's too wet, I need, and, and it, it does happen. But sometimes when I overpaint, um, it, it's just that it's not too wet. It's that I overpaint it. Um, I think, okay, so let's just go back to that color. And what am I going to do with that color? What kind of color should I create? Then let me see with the, should I bring yellow to it? I'm going to bring yellow. I'm going to bring yellow because, oops, I'm starting to think that um, um, I need a little bit of um, yellow and the blue to take, move the needle, move the color needle towards that. Uh, sort of like cast because out of the tube this uh, radiant turquoise that I have that I have um, it, it just feels um, oh yeah I think so I think that's working that's exactly what I needed that's exactly what I needed a little bit of yellow to that uh, turquoise blue a little bit of yellow all right so let's just go for that it needs to be a little darker actually Oh, maybe, maybe I should use pink gray. Let me see if I can find the. Oh, I need some. I need some darker blue. I don't have it. I'm gonna use the phthalo. Uh, uh, the reason why I'm using a darker blue, I think that's probably a little better. It's because um, with the paints gray. I just wasn't getting uh, a, a darker, a colorful darker blue that I needed underneath. Uh, it just felt um, a little bit uh, drabby. Yeah, so that color, it's, uh, I'm happy with that color. Sometimes it's not about matching. Um, it's more about um, uh, uh, pigmentation, value. Um, yeah, and that's it, pigmentation and value. Uh, again, this edge is softer. So I'm just gonna try to, time-wise, I'm okay, but I need to start moving on to other things. But I think my strategy is not a bad one. 
Um, I'm just going to create more softness here with the medium brush. Um, and it's dry. So I just wanted to soften that edge. And at the same time, I'm going to bring some um, titanium white because I feel like that area is much lighter on the painting. And I want to create a little bit of contrast. So again, um, this is all second. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be great. It's all second notes work. Um, I'm creating variations of color and working on the edge of things. That's the, um, the meat and potatoes, although I don't like that expression, of um, the whole painting process. Once we have the foundational notes, the first notes, then we can go about and move that color needle and that value needle. And that's uh, um, a way of saying that we need to make tweaks. Yeah, and uh, oh, this is I'm um, so happy right now. So um, I'm so happy right now. So yeah, like slowly I'm cutting. So I'm doing like a, a couple of things at the same time, uh, applying variations and then um, working on the edges. Uh, the edges constantly move. They're, they're not um, in the same place. And, and also, uh, this is another reason why um, it's so crucial and fundamental and important to not get carried away by emotions when we do the first notes. It's a perfect example because if we fall into that trap, then the emotions will overtake us and then we'll feel that, you know, uh, we're, not, uh, we're not performing right. Just like stick with it. Um, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> Compliment yourself. Don't forget to give yourself compliments when something um, positive happens. Um, uh, when you develop something for, further, you know, we're so engaged. This is so uh, intense and there's so much going on. So uh, yeah, don't forget to uh, uh, give yourself compliments. I try to do that. Um, and, and that's when I find joy in what I'm doing because if I just don't um, um, do that, it's just, uh, just work. <laughs> so I just like to uh, find those moments uh, brief moments where something's happening and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy right now. Um, right. It, again, it's a slow process. Uh, we are doing second notes, um, working with variations of um, color. So I'm not adding new colors right now, just making variations of them. And uh, value, making this part right here lighter. Yeah, and uh, just continuing and this edge. Uh, I love the fact that the plate has harder edges and the shadows have softer edges. So that kind of like helps me. Um, and then I'll just do some values right here. And I love the bouncing of the light. So um, I said earlier, uh, or um, yeah, I said earlier, if you have the fruit uh, in your hands, uh, do it live. and. I said it because there's no way that the, cam the camera can capture the color and the value that our eyes can see. So I will take a picture of this and then I'll probably use the picture later. So it's good to combine if you can um, work done from life and then complement it with a visual reference. But there's no way that uh, off of a photograph you can get um, 
this um, intricate um, array of um, uh, value levels within a spot, it's just, yeah, it just doesn't happen. I'm using two, um, I'm using two brushes. And honestly, at this stage, I'm so um, enjoying the process that I could spend uh, the entire time just focus on the plate alone. There's so much that now I can see uh, that I, wa I want to do, you know. And um, we were just talking this uh, past weekend, we went to uh, home, um, another home, it was great. And um, yeah, we, we, we talked about um, how um, the process of self-generating, um, you see something, you uh, try to capture it, and then your eyes uh, see something that wasn't there or that it's different. Um, I really enjoy that. And that could happen um, in, in one section, in one area. So there's something really nice about the plate creating this curved edge on this side. Whoops, it's probably too much. Uh, so when, what I'm going to do is I'm slowly going to darken or create a glow, I mean a glow, a shade right here. And then use the uh, medium brush to blend it. No paint, dry brush. And what I'm doing is, oh my goodness, yes. I love it. So yeah, I just uh, created this, the plate being um, round. Um, simplification, imperfection. Uh, uh, you have a still life just um, as your uh, partner uh, in this dialogue. And uh, it's just feeding some uh, bits of visual information and giving you, giving us the opportunity to bounce them on the painting. That's how it works. It's either that or I'm just going a little crazy because <laughs> um, since we don't have the opportunity to talk to people in person so much, you know, uh, now maybe there's something about uh, that aspect that Morris Graves uh, found in isolation uh, in the sense that he was really able to establish a dialogue with uh, his, his own environment and really reflect uh, uh, on that dialogue. And then um, uh, he was able to um, apply that uh, onto paintings. So um, this was um, so needed. I was uh, uh, in the sense like, you know, um, as a subject, it was so needed that we did a still life. And I'm glad I, I sort of like simplified it. Um, again, I'm doing peripheral work and I just wanna, hopefully it'll come across. I, I wanna um, just show how important it is to work on peripheral stuff, secondary stuff, or stuff that we think it's not really uh, the main subject in the painting. Because when you develop that, you, um, naturally help the subject uh, get developed. Um, so right now, I will have to do much less work here. And I feel like that's a very good example. I will have to do much less work on the pomegranate uh, than if I had to work on the pomegranate at the very beginning. I would, I would still be painting it and then, um, you know, possibly adding details and who knows, uh, who knows what. But by doing this work on the plate, um, I'm already advancing um, whatever I had on the uh, first notes right here. And I will have to do very little. Uh, I'll have to do very little. So the plate right now, um, I, I see it and I feel um, I need to create more of an oval shape. I didn't see this before. So I'm just gonna work on it right now and then shape that area to narrow. Uh, that oval shape, because it's too round on the edges. This is too much, too arched. So I need to, uh, in other words, I need to squeeze um, the middle of that plate. So it feels more foreshortened than it is right now. 
And those little touches, I am not able to do that when I do linear work, when I do the sketch. Um, only when I apply some shadows, it's so much better. And I just moved um, a little bit, the edge from both sides and I squeezed uh, that and automatically what I made is the plate looking more foreshortened rather than just uh, um, less foreshortened. <laughs> I'll probably have to raise this a tad, but I don't want to do that. Maybe I'll just bring that pomegranate a little bit lower, but I think that's good. All right, I'm going to take a mini break and uh, I'm going to, uh, one minute, and then I'm going to dedicate my um, last uh, minutes uh, to work on the pomegranate. I'm going to lift up the color on the background and but yeah, I'm going to take a little bit, and just, uh, just a minute. Um, and again, what I'm going to do, uh, the strategy here is um, go darker to lighter on the pomegranate uh, for the remaining uh, remainder of the time. And I feel that could be a good stage to sort of like leave it. Um, I consider every single painting that we do uh, with the two hours a work in progress um, um, for many reasons, um, but it's, um, yeah, it's not that, that much time to develop. And then uh, the main reason is because it needs another session to really uh, come together. Um, it's with just a single one, uh, I just feel like we are barely stepping into um, serious territory. Um, but uh, yeah, another thing that I love uh, about using this as a subject, um, uh, it makes me think uh, for a brief moment, I uh, it made me think of my childhood. And also it makes me think of uh, the new generations that are not gonna have the same kinds of memories that, <laughs> that we have. I mean, I cannot think um, <laughs> any child right now. Well, I don't know if they like pomegranates or not, or but um, I don't know. It's something that I feel uh, proud to have experienced. So there you go. And mostly also because it, now it's like expensive and not so accessible. Um, so yeah, again, it's an exotic fruit. All right, so uh, the minute passed and I'm just gonna go to um, the actual uh, pomegranate and I'm gonna do darker. So I think the key, it's that little um, empty uh, cylindric shape. So I'm gonna try to paint that small brush and then I'll just uh, bring some air crew to make that lighter. So I feel like I wanna concentrate I'm gonna lower it and make it wider. So um, everyone um, who sees the painting can recognize what it is. Yeah, it's funny because uh, uh, also this is a, a, a tangent and um, the fruits that were traditional become exotic and uh, the new fruits uh, that we never had before uh, come from exotic or from uh, uh, different places. So there are fruits that I see that I've never seen before. Um, and yet the ones that uh, are were so traditional, now they're just uh, becoming more exotic. It's funny how that goes. Um, another fruit that um, I grew up with that I can barely see it's uh, jujubes. Um, I <laughs> I think jujubes are insane. They were so good, and um, we had a, a little um, piece of land in a mountain, and my dad had a bunch of jujube trees and. I just, uh, <laughs> I think it, now it's jujube season also. I'm not sure, but I used to eat so many jujubes that uh, uh, I would get sick. Um, they're so, I love the acid 
the acid and sweet uh, combination. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't see, I think the other day I saw them, uh, I just got a box and they are that expensive. Um, and that was it. I don't see. If you see jujubes, please let me know where. I'm just gonna drive and get them. I love jujubes. All right, so quinacridone, I'm just trying to create that um, aspect right there, the little um, umbilical cord. <laughs> Sorry for the graphics. <laughs> cut, cut wrong. Um, actually, that's not. Um, I think that's beautiful. And just create that um, that area. So I'm painting the darker areas and also bringing some um, light pink because um, there's some sheen on the skin uh, that indicates a change in direction of the skin. And then I'll just bring the pink with uh, uh, alizarin crimson and bring more of that red. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that's coming along. Uh, I still feel like um, I need to, uh, because what I did, and that's a very common um, habit, or let me call it a mistake. It's like I put these things or this uh, top of the fruit too close to the edge. So the fruit doesn't have a sense that it's really a three quarter perspective. It's more of a profile. And um, what do I need to do? I think I'm gonna move everything. Actually, I am gonna move everything. So here we go. In the final 10 minutes, I could do a lot. Because I really feel like if I just stick with it, it's not going to give me that strong sense of the fruit being uh, rotating a little bit. So I will bring down the edge, that pink. I'll bring it down. I'll bring down um, the darker area. I'll bring down the, the orifice. A tad. And then I'll just shave um, the edge on top. Again, moving the, um, I consider this still second notes, moving the edges um, in addition to uh, creating variations. And I think that's a little, I'm, I'm a little bit happier with that. So I need to bring uh, some shadow behind because the light comes from the front. So this needs to really project a little bit of a shadow. Small brush strokes. Right now, talking about the brush stroke um, direction. I feel like the direction is, um, first of all, it's non-conforming, which means that I, I don't uh, apply based on the edge. Um, I just try to apply it um, randomly almost. Just concentrated on that section right there. I think it's coming along. And again, moving the edges, because right now this bump needs to be lower. So uh, the, the drawing component doesn't change, I mean, doesn't stop. Um, you, you heard me say this uh, several times, uh, painting is drawing. So right now what I'm doing is I am um, uh, creating more bumps also on the fruit. There's such um, a beautiful sense of painting this because there's a strong sense of abstraction on the fruit, on the skin of the fruit. 
and I really enjoy it. Uh, um, once we, I mean, yes, we're moving the edge up and down or uh, making changes, but inside of the fruit, um, things are pretty abstract, I would say. I love that about um, this subject. It makes me feel less, less constrained uh, compared, to the, uh, compared to the portrait. And, and I really appreciate that after a few portraits this week or this month. Uh, something that uh, transports me to a different state of mind. Um, I think for me, that's um, what's important as well. Perhaps that could be, um, I'm not trying to um, pull anything pretentious, but the, perhaps that could be another uh, a definition of beauty, you know, something that transports you to a different state of mind. Yeah, so I think it's a combination. Uh, so right now, um, I can bring my uh, critique or judgment. Um, it doesn't look like an onion uh, or starting to look more like a pomegranate and I still haven't even done the bumps on the side. So there's something about the onion that may have the same color actually, depending on the onion, but it has more roundness. So I really have to enhance the bumpiness and I have to enhance all the irregularities on the skin because I think that will, um, uh, and not that we need to, because I'm look, I'm thinking of the pomegranates that Matisse did in that painting. Uh, by the way, one of them was open, so I just said the color red was everywhere except in the pomegranate or on the pomegranate, but one of it um, was uh, red. But yeah, so that's where my thinking is. This is way too round, so I just need to move that edge dramatically. So that's going to be a little. Um, I, I just see it right now. I, my pomegranate is too round. How crazy is this? It's way too round. Uh, I didn't see this. So right now, it just involves redrawing the edges entirely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to resketch that edge. Because there's no way that I'm going to be happy with this roundness. And I'll just do it with gray on the other side because this really goes in a lot more. So I'm just shading huge chunks on my fruit, because now that I just started to paint um, uh, the colors, I realize that it's still not quite, um, it's still not quite there. So it requires drastic measures and sometimes, um, we don't want to go there because we've invested so much work and then it just means like, wait a, wait a second, we have to do this again. Um, but as I usually say, it takes less time to make uh, adjustments now than what we did um, when we uh, set up the first layers. So knowing that that's the case, um, I'm never afraid to uh, scratch something and then start again. And I feel like that it's already a little bit better, but um, there's a bump here that I need to bring forward. Yeah, I'm an exaggerated attack because I just feel like um, this wonkiness uh, of the shape, it's what makes uh, a pomegranate look like a pomegranate and not like a red onion. So I need to be uh, mindful of that. Um, and again, it's not like it's just going to invalidate my work. Um, it's just an opportunity to uh, put the observation into practice. Um, and learn about the shape and how um, it uh, deploys itself differently. Uh, you know, it was very dramatic, but it was so worth it because right now the shape is much more um, 
what I would expect from a pomegranate. I'm so happy I did that. Um, I, I shaped a lot and I'm just gonna give myself a couple more minutes because I think the contrast on this side is very important. There's so much that I wanna do. Uh, there's so much that I wanna do and this is a little bit softer. So I'm just gonna bring some of the um, alizarin crimson. So this uh, uh, stain needs to be a little bit softer. And a little bit redder there, so I can, I, you know, the thing is that these are, th these things are more important than what happens inside of the pomegranate, and uh, the reality is that most of us we think like what happens inside of the pomegranate it's more important than what happens outside. So we may find ourselves like tweaking, and I miss that spot, and there's that mark, and uh, there are many other things that are more important than the details inside of the pomegranate. Uh, that's like uh, the icing on the cake. Um, yeah, it's not the stains on the skin or the color that's gonna uh, get you there. Um, and for me, this was an example. You know, I didn't have the shape that I wanted, so or that I needed. Uh, so I I could have done a bunch of things inside, but um, unless I uh, tackle the shape and it still um, needs to be a little bit tweaked here. Yeah, that's better. Ouch. Yeah, I'll work a little bit more on um, the colors on top. Maybe I'll bring some red to mix with the alizarin crimson. And then uh, I could start bringing some of the deeper colors inside. So there's something really beautiful about this. Um, it's like an age skin. Let's not forget that because there's something about uh, the skin of the pomegranate that I just feel like um, it's a good um, reminder of the fruit uh, has been exposed to the elements. It's not like um, something like an orange, I would say, but with the pomegranate, there's something about the imperfections of the skin that I think conceptually, it really speaks to me. It's the fact that, you know, this is the proof that I've been exposed to all kinds of weather or um, if not all kinds of weather. So time uh, is showing on my skin. Um, I love that about the fruits so much. So. I'm just uh, possibly, I'm, I'm going to uh, pause here. And before I move forward, I'm just going to dedicate a couple of minutes to see where I'm at right now. I'm happy about the um, strategy of going uh, about the per peripheral areas. So, um, and uh, creating the second notes on the plate and the ground. I'll probably work on that a little bit more. Um, and the color of, I feel like on the background, I would want to bring some transition because I feel like if I bring some lightness on this area, it would just en enhance the directional um, aspect of the light because light is part of the painting even though it's invisible. And the way is part of the painting is by taking into account as, um, as many uh, areas where the light reflects or creates shadows as we can. So uh, by, uh, taking care of all those areas, we reinforce the idea that there is a light direction that impacts um, all the things in the same scene. So I'll work on that, more light on the this area right here, and perhaps this could be a little bit darker. So it has this idea of the direction. But overall, I think I'm okay. And um, yeah, it's a good stage. So um, what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna take a break. I'm gonna take a picture of this and upload it. Um, 10 minutes, so we'll rec reconvene at 1.13. Um, and uh, let us know uh, if you're gonna be here and want feedback so we can dedicate um, enough time for everyone before um, the, this hour ends. I just wanna make sure that we have an account and of how many people. And so, um, 
we could do that, then I, I know um, how much time we can allocate. Perfect time for a break. I'm gonna pause this at 1.13, let's reconvene. All right, so yay, thank you. That was like super quick, I forgot to, um, oh, let me just uh, also make sure that you can unmute yourselves, but I forgot to say, uh, drink water, <laughs> use the restroom. <laughs> Anyhow, because there's, we're so engaged that we forget to take care of ourselves. But um, thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share the folder. Um, and thanks for uploading. Let me see if I can just uh, really quickly uh, do that. Uh, the paintings in the folder looked absolutely amazing. So um, yeah, I'll just share my last uh, stage. Um, How's that? So I'll just do that. Um, okay, so this is the, the last stage of the painting uh, where I left it. And you can see how much I changed the edges um, of the pomegranate. It was just way too round. And I'm happy about uh, lowering uh, that little trumpet. Um, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm happy. So there's a lot more work to do, but um, I'm really happy about the uh, breakdown of the um, stages. So I left the um, pomegranate at the end. Um, so anyhow, um, and so Denise, uh, I'm gonna start with you because I realized that the painting that you uploaded, it was yours. I didn't upload it, that painting, correct? Yeah, that's right. Can you, yeah. can you hear me? So yeah, thank you. So thanks for doing that. I was just confused, but uh, yeah, let me just bring it down. So I'll just see if I can find it. Uh, one second, it's right here, perfect. So let me just uh, put it right next to it. Um, I love that composition. Yeah, and I'll put it right next to the last uh, stage uh, just because um, I love seeing uh, I love seeing all the sketches, the uh, first sketch, I mean, uh, the shadow or the shading, and then uh, start applying the wash. So um, yeah, this is just uh, absolutely amazing. Um, compositionally, that image um, or the image is very strong. So I just love the fact that, it, again, it's like positioned like on the lower right end. Um, of the painting. There's something really cool about that. Uh, mostly because you bring a, a, a huge amount of like focus and I would say tension um, on this edge right here. And I forgot which painting it was, but uh, there was a point that we did an exercise and someone um, added something very sinuous right next to something very straight. So I feel like the fact that there's less distance between the round and the chair um, compared to the edge of the painting, creates a beautiful tension. Um, it's really dynamic. Uh, you can really um, see the roundness of the uh, pomegranate. And then I, I just love the fact that you brought that diagonal. So it shows that there's perspective. And not only that, but the, the fact that it's off center uh, just gives enough room to just sort of like expand the shadow. Um, so compositionally amazing. I love the color palette that you chose. The pinks are incredible. You can read it's a pomegranate already. So you, you don't have to sort of like deal with, uh, with, with any of those uh, things. Oops, there's something uh, before that. Let me just uh, double check. So let's analyze the values uh, really quickly. Uh, let me see, I'm just gonna do a quick Ooh, okay. Uh, so I would say right off the bat, if you want it, I would just increase uh, the darkness because I feel like there's something very dramatic about uh, the light quality. So I would definitely just bring uh, more of a deeper shadow. Mm -hmm. um, there's something really beautiful about the contrast behind the gray on the background and uh, the pomegranate. So I feel like contrast wise, and well, it, it, it has it here. So perhaps. Never mind. Perhaps um, maybe it's the 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 reflection of the paint, but perhaps I would deepen the shadows underneath the chair. So there's something that pushes the that area lower a little bit because there's something really interesting about this deep deep shadow 
uh, below the chair and on the side of the chair that kind of like spills. And uh, I think this um, uh, abrupt, I don't know if it's there or not. Yeah, it is there. So I cannot expand it because I know that's possibly the edge of the floor, um, but I feel, you know, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I would say maybe uh, create a, a, a different brush stroke on the wall. So it looks more like the convergence of something vertical and something that's horizontal. Because right now it just reads uh, foreign or not integrated. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, yeah, I would just create more of a crescent shadow or crescent shape on the shadow of the pomegranate. Um, so mostly a uh, value work, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and that will be it. Yeah, really, I love the color palette. So I think that's excellent. Okay. Okay, thanks. Great work. Yep, beautiful work. And I'm just going to move um, Laura. I think I'm just going to, yeah, I think this is uh, Laura. How did you start painting pomegranates like last week or something? <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> I, 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 it's just in, incredible because um, I know you take your sweet time with a sketch and everything, but this is, looks like, you know, you, you, you painted it in two or three days. Good job. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I was like you, Julio. I was like, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go to the red. I don't want to go to the red. And wow. until the end is that I had to leave the house. Amazing. No, compositionally, this is really interesting. It's it's fresh and modern and uh, it's not predictable. And, you know, there's something about uh, the rim of the plate that I love. It looks metallic on your painting, which is much better than the ceramic. So mm. I would just keep it that way because there's something super cool about that. Um, yeah, I think that is amazing. I love the all right, so now I see, I see, I see. Okay, so I think um, there's work to be done on the pomegranates on top because they look like drinks. I, I thought they were sort of like our cocktails. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know? no, I haven't, I haven't touched them yet for a okay. color yet. So bring the color there because there's something extremely cool about the red being cropped on top so much. It's really amazing. Mm. It's almost it's showing the feet of the fruit and then, um, and then you have the shadow. So absolutely. And uh, I would bring the color there. And in regards to the pomegranate, so I feel like it doesn't have a, a sense of like being spheric or round. Uh, ah. And I would possibly blend more because the light's coming from behind because you have, you have the shadow against the table and you have the shadow of the plate. And then you can see that the light's coming from behind you or behind the fruits. But um, yes. on the pomegranate, you can see the spot of light. Um, that light reflects the window or whatever it's open. But I feel like here it's not happening. So I think I would just consider bring that highlight from the back and then blend more some of the highs and lows. Okay, perfect. Yes. Uh, it's funny because when I was trying to find a composition for it, I, was, I went all around it. I had it on a cake thing. And then I realized that the star of the show was the guy that was off the plate. And then, uh, so that's why I'm featuring, I'm featuring her. Yeah, but um, okay, yes. And also I just noticed right now when you kept going back and forth that the, uh, the shadows from the pomegranates have a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of red on the actual plate. Yeah. yeah. I noticed that. So I guess I, I'll have to do a little bit of that or? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a, a great example of a third note. It's not really colored that way, but it has a blush of it. So um, yeah, absolutely. Especially if you bring the color also on the fruit. Yeah, and, okay. and, those, and those three could be a little bit less developed if you want. You can just leave those three uh, less um, um, detailed. A focus? And, yeah, if you wanted to consider that. And then, although you, you know, I leave it up to you, but yeah, the rim of the plate it's just ridiculous, lady. <laughs> and I also love, uh, I also uh, I used our favorite new friend, a Perugian Blue. Oh, yeah. For the shadows, <laughs> because I was inspired by the one blue that you showed, blue against the red. 
And then you're blue. And I was like, I want to use blue. Right. And then I saw a little bit of the gray in the shadows. So I just kind of went for Beautiful. it with the position. Uh, I just keeping it like that. Yeah. yeah, nice contrast of temperature. Good job, Laura. Thank you, Julio. <laughs> this is great. I love what you said about that. Uh, it's a it's a little, re even though I've enjoyed the um, the, the portraits, uh, this is a, it's like a fresher. Yeah, I right? feel like I'm taking a shower. So. Yeah, nice break. Yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> Thanks for the comment. Thank you, Julio. Okay. I'm just gonna, this is, uh, the, uh, is this yours, Darlene? Yes. I think yes, so. it is. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I didn't have the. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so, uh, hold on a second. Yeah, I love the composition. I love the um, the way you painted it. And I would say, uh, do you have an image? Did you upload an image on the? Um... the one, excuse me, it's the one with the spoon, but I left the spoon out. Oh, so, okay, perfect. So let me see if I see it. I think I passed it. Okay, the one with the spoon, this one right here. Okay, let me just put it right next. Uh, so we can just uh, kind of like compare and go back and forth and whoopsie. Uh, let me see if I can just bring it up. By the way, Jen, thanks for uploading the flowers. It warms my heart. Sure. Oh, good. <laughs> so beautiful. Um, all right, so yeah, perfect. Uh, all right, so well, my, uh, my photo, it's really weird because the copy I made is much oranger, but uh, that's I, okay. Yeah, that's okay. So in that sense, you yeah. know, a, a couple of things, color and shape composition wise, it looks amazing. And I just love the fact that you um, are you going to consider creating sort of like a seamless background? Um, yes. Okay. Oh, I see. Well, yeah, I mean, um, I think I think that would be interesting just because it would just create more of a sense of an atmosphere around it. Oh, so yeah. uh, consider bringing that um, uh, raw umber also on the background or at least fading it. So it has more of a seamless uh, continuation if you if you want to. I love what you did on the left side because it's more artistic almost. And the other one, it's more uh, it creates more perspective. So you have choices here. Um, you can go the uh, the way of the left, um, making making it more of a transition, or the way on the right, where it has more perspective. But um, in that sense, I would just bring more uh, pinks and uh, and purples. Uh, even though the the photograph has a lot of re uh, orange, obviously it has a lot of orange, but. Um, I would almost, I feel like it's uh, uh, taking over too much. So the combination of the roundness of the fruit and the dominance of orange, um, it almost makes it read like a different kind of fruit, it's, which is totally fine. But I just feel I would bring more of a reddish uh, tone. And um, in that sense, uh, also I would just create or enhance the bumps on the left of the fruit. Cause right now it's like a very round. And um, in addition, I would say because this pomegranate has still the little tiny leaves uh, either at the end or uh, on the head, I'm not quite sure what's the head and what's the tail of uh, the fruit, uh, on any fruit, I'm not talking about this, but since you brought this botanical element, I feel like here it's too yellow and too green. So you, you, it just receives a lot of attention. So I would just, um, um, tarnish it more and making it a little bit more um, um, uh, similar in color, I would say, to the pomegranate. Okay. Thank you. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, I agree. I'm, I, I think that's great. I'm, I'm shocked that my uh, photocopy oh. is like orange. And when I just saw, saw it sitting there, I realized how red it was. But right. I'm going to do more pink and purple. I'm not going to pay attention to that. Right. Uh, I think so. Yeah. And sometimes you could even, what you could even do, um, have the image as a reference, but also bring a different uh, fruit to kind of like give you a sense of the color palette. Because you could treat this with the same values 
but then you could apply a different color palette on it or, or something that with a little bit more variation. Okay. Okay, well, thank you. I think I, I can manage this. So. Yeah, of course, it looks amazing. Yeah, I can't wait. I cannot wait. So thanks, Arlene, as always. I love your style. It's amazing. Awesome. So I'm just gonna move. Uh, I think I have this one right here. Dina, how are you? Fine, thank you. Oh, this is so beautiful. I love uh, the composition so much um, <laughs> for many reasons, obviously, but um, I just love, uh, it's very Zen uh, just mm -hmm. because you have the ceramic, mm -hmm. or the earth, the earthware, and then mm -hmm. you have the organic element and then you have the wood and then you have mm -hmm. the jute. Um, so it, it has a lot of like rich materials. At mm -hmm. the same time, everything feels very neutral and monochromatic because you have beige and ecru and grays and uh, browns. And then the only color accent, the way I see it, it's on the fruit. So it's a good mm -hmm. way to bring lots of stuff, but at the mm -hmm. same time, uh, categor categorizing it, right? Mm -hmm. right? Categorizing it. Mm -hmm. So um, excellent. I mean, excellent image and compositionally. I know that you, there's a lot uh, to be done and- um, Right. That came but, out dark too. I don't know that picture came out really dark, but that's oh, okay. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, it just creates the the sense of the bold. The, the most difficult um, component or part when you do a bird's eye view, it's especially with uh, dishware, is the fact that mm -hmm. you have to create a sense of like this light um, hollowness and also right. the cast shadow. Right. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise it looks like it's just cut and paste over a surface, and and you right. weren't sure. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, maybe maybe it was a little bit uh, too bold to try, but you know, um, no, no. that's the only way you learn, right? Yeah, no, I would say this is pretty amazing. So it's pretty amazing, and, and you know, I also like how you organize it uh, on your painting surface on your format because I feel it's mm -hmm. I feel it's just right. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, there I feel like there's a, a lot more that I would do on mm -hmm. um, the surroundings before I would just mm -hmm. go on the pomegranate. So mm -hmm. um, I would just continue um, the chopsticks and uh, and even the pattern on the dish. I think it's really right. important. Um, right. I mean, I absolutely love this uh, 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 radial. Um, texture mm -hmm. so i don't know if that's nuts or not but i would just bring some brush stroke that would obviously mm -hmm. i would not make it literal but mm -hmm. there's something about that radial texture that it's so mm -hmm. beautiful i would mm -hmm. bring it mm -hmm. yeah i'm trying I'm, that was a plan so we'll see how, how how smooth the plan goes yeah no i mean it's a good plan and you know don't don't worry about complexity and richness because you can always um, use simplification uh, mm -hmm. depending on whatever time you want to allocate to this um, mm -hmm. but yeah we just continue and um, in that sense when it comes to the uh, uh, to the pomegranate so again a, a couple of things which you did well I mean I don't know let's kind of like analyze it on the photograph the pomegranate uh, is rotated a little bit. So the tip, mm -hmm. the, the head of the tail of the pomegranate mm -hmm. has rotated. I think that's amazing. Um, but I, I know that you put it in the center, so that enhances a lot more. So what happens here when it's so uh, sort of like a center, it's the fact that you will have to work more the illusion of form of the pomegranate because you don't have that trick of having it off center. So in that sense, yeah. Yeah, I, would, I took, you know, I took, I took the picture like this, which is a little bit, like you said, off, just not quite exactly bird's eye, but it's a little bit off bird's eye. And then when I was, and then I heard you say, you know, it's really good to capture it when you live. So then when I'm thinking like that, I was like right on, you know, my <laughs> face is like right on top of it. And I'm like, wait a minute, maybe it'd be better if I just stuck with the picture for right now. And then just, um, refer to the live the, the real fruit once i'm 
once I've got everything, because I like the way it is in the picture more than it is in the painting. The painting is like straight on from on top, and that's not really exactly what I wanted. So I, uh, I would say same thing as I mentioned to Darlene. It's sort of like a choice here. Um, yeah. Um, my thing, I mean, the thing is that with this, which is also very, uh, very interesting, but um, yeah. you'll have to work more uh, uh, with, for example, the cast shadow of the little. Yeah. 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 And um, so, yeah. See, when I was looking at it on top, I don't see a cast shadow because it's just like right mm -hmm. the, the lighting is, is different than when I took, I took the picture on the counter, but it's not in the exact spot where I'm painting. So when I have the fruit on the plate, I'm looking right on top of it and then I don't see a cast shadow. So I, I like, I think I'm gonna go back to like, like you said, I'm gonna go more with the picture, I think. Okay, you can combine it. Yeah. It's good to kind of- sort Yeah, of combine. Up. Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. Perfect. So that's, yeah, that's that's what I would say. Monochromatic, sort of like a, a range of, mono, it's not monochromatic. The background is not monochromatic. There is color there, but I would right. just keep it unified. So it, it right. enhances the sense, the sense of like uh, calmness. Um, right. And then also, uh, since you have so many textures, it would just sort of like bring them all together in a way. Yeah. And then boom, you have the uh, pomegranate sort of like singing opera there. <laughs> oh, let's hope so. <laughs> yeah. It already does. It already does. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Dina. Um, and Sarah, so wow, that's amazing. Incredible. It's again like Laura. Did you did you start last week? <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. Um I mean same as Laura also, you did a bunch. And not only did you did a bunch, but you did texture, fabric, glass, transparency, uh, seeds. Wow. Um, uh, you, did, you were not interrupted this time, right? No, I wasn't. And um, just to give you an idea of why I made the composition that I did, um, when I, I bought these, first of all, I was shocked by how expensive they were. I thought, oh my God, this is crazy. Um, and I cut one open and it looked like it was bleeding. So I thought I'm going to compose something that looks like every, every part of it is bleeding off the edge. Like you don't see the full plate. You don't, the only thing you see full on is the fruit, which is bleeding. It's bleeding onto the plate. Uh, the pieces are bleeding onto each other. The fabric in the back is bleeding off the sides it seemed to make sense to me because um, it's a great reflection of how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> <laughs> like everything is, is uh, chaotic and um, wow, it's nice. not really simple for me right now. Um, when I looked at the more simplified mm -hmm. compositions, I thought they were beautiful, but they didn't reflect Good. how I was feeling right now. So Good. that's why I did it that way. Amazing. I have to say, I mean, this looks done in a way. I, I, I don't want you to uh, stop because we could just go over things. But as a painting, as a painting, it, it, it looks done. It just looks like a really interesting uh, composition. And the way you painted it, it's super fresh. And there's so much going on that it feels very rich. So I, I think that's incredible. But um, I still would kind of like add a few more, more details because you can even go beyond what you achieved. So um, yeah, I just love the, the gold. The plate is outstanding. I just think it's amazing. Uh, I mean, it, and I'm speechless about the, the fabric in the back. That, that it's incredible. So my eye went to a couple of things uh, uh, first. I mean, uh, so, there's a certain lightness on the pomegranate in the back. So I just mm -hmm. feel like I would just perhaps tweak. They could still be the same um, color, but I feel like if you bring variations of that red, slight variations, the painting will just um, go to the next, uh, the next level. Because I feel like, you know, it's, they're very similar, but I would just make a, a, a tad of a change uh, in the one in the in the back, perhaps. Okay. Maybe a little bit pink here, perhaps, and uh, less grayish, because uh, I feel like that's just going to enrich um, 
uh, the painting because since you have like uh, so many uh, pieces, uh, I feel like if you treat them slightly different, um, um, you you'll enhance the the complexity and sophistication of the of the painting. And okay. In, in regards of the inside of the pomegranate. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that, that what I would do possibly it brings a little bit of the bleed, what you did here, which is brilliant. Also in certain parts of the flesh of the pomegranate, because I feel like this okay. is heavily bleeding. Mm -hmm. um, and I would just, uh, I would just bring some blended notes on that area. Okay. And at the same time, I think I would also uh, uh, intensify the density of the seeds um, okay. towards sort of like the core. I love, I love the fact that it, it's very, it creates like a star shape. So I think that's really okay. cool. But I okay. feel like, you know, um, there's an intensity uh, and a density of color um, uh, in, in that star shape. So I feel like I would just enhance that a tad more. Okay. Um, but the rest, I, I'm telling you, I think that's good. And I love what you did with the plate that it's sort of like a, it's fragmented. It's just mm -hmm. it's, it's beautiful. Don't don't um, quote unquote fix that because it's really cool. <laughs> okay, and I just like to take a second to thank everybody on Ruthless Painters. I know I'm never on camera, and I I don't say much, but I so appreciate all of you and the group that we have because you know you keep seeing this phrase. We're all in it together. It's really the only group where I feel like I'm really in it with you. <laughs> Isn't that here, awful? here? I agree. Here, I mean, here. I have a I have a work group, and I don't feel that way with my work group, but I feel that way with you guys, and I just Whoa. appreciate everything you do in your work, and I'm glad to be part of it. Thanks, Sarah. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for saying that. Yeah, it's just uh, it's such a gift to see everyone's uh, work every week. It's just. Absolutely. For us, that's the, it's a gift, honestly. We feel so inspired, right, Jen? Absolutely. Sarah, I, I wanted to tell you that when you sent your picture to us um, of, the, of the picture of the pomegranates, I thought that was a painting. <laughs> <laughs> Such a beautifully composed picture. So you have an eye, my friend. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. It's beautiful. It's, it's really outstanding. Yeah, and super, super fast. I'm gonna do another refresh. Claire, let's, how are you Claire? I'm just gonna go to... I'm good. Um, I think Lois was before me. I mean, uh, I'm ready though. Okay, yeah, let's, If yeah, let's, I just went with a photo after, so Lois, yes. So let's do it, <laughs> if that's okay. Sorry, Lois. Yeah. Uh, yeah, did you refresh? Because I, I kept oh. uploading new photos. Okay, okay. I'll do it really quick. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I got two pomegranates for $5. I thought it was a little expensive. When I was a kid, I remember this so distinctly. At school, they banned all the children from bringing pomegranates because they were staining all our clothes. Oh, my gosh. And my mom who made a lot of our clothes. She was a frustrated fashion designer. She even stopped buying them because they would stain our clothes. So I barely ever will, I never buy one because I'm just like, well, it's gonna yeah. stain my clothes. So now I've got this cut open, I need to eat it. I'll enjoy it. Yeah, you should. Yeah. I'm glad you shared that story. <laughs> I think that's uh, so interesting and fascinating. Wow. Um, Okay, well, listen, I mean, I love the fact that you are keeping it within your series, which is that uh, special corner that you have in your house. And I think that's brilliant because th they're all going to have this uh, thread connecting them. And um, these are beautiful pieces, by the way. And I love the bluish, icy blue, um, which is a good idea because that um, is a nice contrast of temperature. Um, and then, yeah, you put a knife. That's 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 powerful. I mean, it, it's really cool. So I'm just gonna go over uh, elements um, that I see. Uh, actually, I love the fact that you brought in um, the darkness. So this makes it more classic. 
and mm -hmm. uh, and it just um, really creates a, a, a very dramatic backdrop. So the fruits clearly stand out. Um, so in that sense, I know that there is that corner, but um, that you sort of like uh, create more of a, um, a Dutch Renaissance background. So it works, it works. If you wanted to bring, um, if you were in the mood of uh, bringing a, a, another element, a playful element, you could still stick with that uh, dark background and perhaps bring the idea of a ghostly corner right there. So you can still have that threat uh, continuing in all your paintings. Uh, I, but it's an artistic choice. I just think, love the fact that this one sticks out. Uh, cutting board that's really cool because it just brings that sense of like um, form very strongly. Um, and again, that sense of narrative, uh, for me, it's just like a full one and a split one. There's a, a documenting of time. Um, and in addition to obviously having the tool that had, was used to make the cut. So there's, uh, it's not just a still life, it's a documenting of something. And, and that's how my mind kind of like wanders and goes when I see something classic, especially because I feel like there was an intention behind that arrangement. So uh, clearly there, there's something uh, intentional here. So in, in, in regards of the knife and the shadow, I just feel like I would possibly darken the blade a tad more because it feels um, very collaged. And I would just kind of like maybe bring some of the darkness over the blade. And not only that, but uh, I think you did it. That's There's at least from the photo, which is different than from seeing it from, from life, obviously. But there's a sense of the reflection of the flesh of the pomegranate on the blade. So I don't know if that happened or not, but okay, I would uh, I would just kind of consider that. You know, I'm with you. I don't like knives, and I wasn't going to include it. But then I, I too was struck by how it looked like blood. So that so, was part of the choice. Good idea. I just think, and don't don't change it. Stand behind it because it's something really. Uh, really strong and, and, and powerful. I just think that um, uh, bringing that object, it, it, you know, you could stay on the surface and then just say that, you know, you're just ready to eat the fruit. But this is gonna, um, uh, to me, knives are, knives are triggers. And it just depends on whoever is um, looking at uh, uh, that image. It's just gonna create something, which in itself is amazing. So everyone will have a different approach and uh, you got to possibly uh, know more about the person uh, by asking them what they think about this than uh, just putting the fruit by itself. So that's the power of a composition. So in that sense, I'm glad you incorporated it, but, um, and, and, and uh, maybe that's a subject matter that we need to bring another time, you know, the knives, uh, you know, as triggers and, and uh, but let me just go back to the, the painting. Don't leave the knife, but then just uh, unify the blade with the, with the handle because I feel like it stands out too much. That contrast, it's a little bit too um, uh, collage-like. So I would just unify both. Okay. I see that. And uh, in regards of the, yeah, the flesh looks amazing. I would just possibly bleed a little bit of that radish note on the, uh, the, the flesh or the skin. I would just bleed it a tad. Um, and, uh, and I think that would be it. So a couple of things, because um, you have the knife, you have um, the open fruit, and you have the full one, which is rendered beautifully, by the way. And uh, this is a good way of doing the, the end of the fruit uh, with something that doesn't feel foreign to it. So Darlene, if you're still watching, something like, even though that photo, it reads green, but that sort of a tarnished color, I feel like it makes it more uh, integrated with the rest of the fruit. So for me, um, the criticism uh, would be, you have the stains right here. So mm -hmm. what I would do is I would possibly reinforce those to, so they look like they're intentionally uh, juice. There's juice there and not uh, the fact that you tried to make uh, one of the seats and you uh, didn't do the full seat. So I would reinforce the color and the fact that it's a drop and I would reconsider adding more uh, here because I feel 
um, I feel like it's almost too much in the, in the sense that, you know, um, you already have the knife and if you add um, a lot of information, there's a, a way of like removing the mystery a little bit. So um, add more what? I'm sorry, I don't so know. Add, make this more of a spot. Okay. Uh, sort of like more of a spot on the board, maybe not as round, but a little bit more oval. So it looks like it's on the surface because right now it's like a little bit too round. Okay. And perhaps just making the, I think you have it, making the outside like uh, even so there's no shadow. So it looks like it's a spot. Mm -hmm. And then I would just uh, reconsider having so many uh, tiny ones along the, along the knife because I feel like with the shadow and maybe a couple, um, it, you would have enough to give the idea that the juice is also on the knife without being um, um, too literal. I hear what you're saying, Julio. I like that there's a lot there because to okay. me it's more violent. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And you but know I what? Often the color of those to a darker, the darker Aquanon. This is excellent that we have this uh, our conversation and I'm so happy that you said that because this is more about me than it is about the painting. So um, that's what um, um, it's good to have this sort of like, uh, you know, discussion and dialogue because I, I love what you just said. Perfect. Just makes sense. Okay. And then have it in your house. And then when you have, when you have guests, just uh, tell them, what do you think about this painting? Uh -huh. And this will be a, a, the perfect Freudian way to know who, bringing, who you're bringing to your house. When, it, when that will happen in 2022 or whatever. <laughs> oh my God. Jen so, said 2025. I have a question for you about the bottom. I, I, I made the lip of the board bigger than it actually is just to even it out. Yeah. I don't know, does it look okay? Yeah, I don't know. It looks okay. It looks okay. It looks okay. I would just probably bring the darkness a little bit forward because it looks a little bit like floating. Yeah, okay. All right. So in the foreground as well, put some make it dark. Right, maybe. Yeah. And also I love the difference between both sides. Mm -hmm. So I think I would make a cast shadow here and a highlight on that side. So notice I'm uh, there is no shadow here and it's much lighter. And then there is a, a little bit of a shadow here, which makes sense because then all the shadows correlate, not only the uh, knife, but also the board, the cutting board. The shadows were, I spent more time on the knife and the shadows than I think I did on the pomegranates. I learned so much from that lesson where we held off painting the star. I think it was a sunflower assignment. I really didn't spend as much time on the pomegranate on the right. Mm. At it all. looked amazing. <laughs> I was like, eh, pomegranate. <laughs> it worked. It's a good way for me to trick my perfectionist brain to to hold off, because otherwise I'll overwork it. Happens to uh, all of us. It's a it's a constant uh, work. Thank you for this assignment. Thank you. I guess I'll, I, I, I don't want to eat my pomegranate yet because I want to still paint it, but I, now I really want it. I haven't had one in like 40 years. Oh my gosh. So make it a ritual or a ceremony. When something like this happens, I like to uh, bring a lot of attention and make it, uh, make it more of a ceremony. So yeah. I will. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Julio. Thanks, Claire. Cool. So, um, Julie, wait, 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 right? Yes. So, uh, right? Okay. Yeah, yes. I have a photo in there. I put in two photos. I had one with a horse and one with a sun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me just uh, go back really quickly and uh, see if I can find the, uh... the picture. The color on the picture is so oh, blown yeah. out on my photograph. Oops. You see the uh, photo? Okay. Uh, Okay, let me see what's, um, hold on a second. I just need to move it a little bit. Um, um, okay. 
Well, that's um. Oh low. wait, that's not that's not that. That's lowest. That's fine. Oh, she's right next to me though. Though, put it down there. You you can do it. <laughs> you can do hers. <laughs> this is right down there. <laughs> Two tags at once. <laughs> oh my gosh. But you just missed it, Julio. Go back up. You just missed it. Oh, there. The <laughs> flowers. Above the flowers. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that your tree, Julie? Do you have a tree? That's not my tree. I do have, I have three trees. And oh, wow. Trees total. Julie, where did you get the, um, oh, it's just a photo, right? Or did you get them somewhere or? What? No, they're my um, pomegranates and I picked them a little too early because I couldn't get to the store today because our road was closed. And um, I opened the, uh, them up and they're white. The seeds are still like white, yellow inside. I put wow. a picture on. So um, I, I had to sacrifice <laughs> one of my pomegranates. And these guys are really kind of small, um, but they're, they're good. And I have a, 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 a um, helpful hint at the end of, let's talk about the painting first. But, you know, I have too much in this painting because there's green in it because I took it right off the tree. And right. it, they weren't right. ripe enough. So they, I had to cut the branch a little bit. Um, and I ended up, I painted the green in and then I painted it all out because it was just too much going on. Oh, okay. Really? Was it like uh, too, um, you didn't like it? Yeah, it was just too much. I'd rather have the Santos and I sort of wanted to go with a really dark background. I, okay. uh, my camera captured this with a lot of high contrast. The, the reds are much deeper. I wish I... I oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I just I can't. I can't even. It looks. It looks. They look like red balls here. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have one well, that's a little bit better to show it. But I would say okay, good. So thanks for just. Uh, I mean, you have a, a, a advantages here Be, because of the fact that the fruit is not fully ripe yet. You have the crown that that's much mm -hmm. more pronounced. That it's not has not wilted. So, right. I think that's an asset and that's amazing. And I would possibly kind of like uh, even um, work add more. more work to it because yeah. it's something extraordinary that you have. And it's because, you know, of the fruit not being completely, you know, ripe. Um, right. So I would work on those elements. I would possibly, um, there's a little bit of lightness uh, underneath um, the bigger mm -hmm. fruit. So I would just distinguish the shadow a tad, um, the mm -hmm. cast shadow uh, from both fruits because I yeah. feel like one, it's a little, it's not as dark. So I would just uh, okay. possibly, yeah. And at the same time, I wonder if, depending on the light direction, I just wonder if there's any shadow perhaps going behind um, this one also, because it's very concentrated and, and very compacted underneath. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like, I don't know how, since you remove the, uh, the foliage, I feel like um, I would find out if there's something going on behind because that could create perspective and the fact that uh, it would pull it a, a, apart from the, from the wood. Right, I didn't really finish that middle space of wood yet. <laughs> okay. I think compositionally it looks uh, incredible and I love uh, that you lower the table a little bit com compared to the photograph because you want the fruit to really stand out and then create more of a perspective. Um, and I also like the blue and um, yeah, I think I'm just curious and looking forward to see how you're gonna uh, render the, the sculpture. I love the fact that he's uh, holding a flower. There's something yeah. Cool I want to put that in. I wasn't going to do much. I was going to do, you know, keep it sort of um, elusive in the background okay. and not make it, since it is soft in the photograph, right. I thought I would maybe put a few of the facial figures on, on but yeah. I do want to do the flower because that's part of the reason I, uh, I left him there on my, oh. on the side table where he is. <laughs> this is, so. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I would just treat it in a very almost like ghostly way. I love the folds of uh, uh, the gown. Mm -hmm. and, um, Which need to be dark and yeah. Yeah, I would just, yeah. And the the thing, I just, uh, in, in that sense, because it's closer to the edge of the uh, painting, just make mm -hmm. sure that the axis, the axis, what runs through the core of the, uh, oh, yeah. the statue is it's as perfect. vertical, and as parallel as possible to the edge of the painting. Because I feel like there's a little bit, 
and it could be me because uh, of the way. Um, yeah, that, I took uh, the photo too. Yeah, yeah but oh. I would make it as uh, as straight as possible. So then there's no sense of that being uh, skewed or or gravitating to towards the edge of the painting. Okay, that's a great idea. Yeah, but the rest looks great. I like the uh, color. Um, palette it's super strong and uh, i like the fact that there are two fruits and again to me it's the crown the the mm. crown at the end of the fruit that really it's really right and my real painting has a lot more brown and a little bit of green actually in that crown still um but it it just over contrasted when i shot the photo quickly right. so yeah yeah but just i'll bit. work on it a little bit more um okay. i wanted to tell everybody who's eating pomegranates because i eat them all the time when I can get them, <laughs> it, yeah. you know, they're so messy, but there's a really easy way to clean, to get the seeds out without having to get it all over yourself. And that's to cut the pomegranate, not through the crown, but the other way. So you expose all the chambers more easily. So you cut it like the equator of the fruit. Oh. And you take one half and you take it over a bowl that's maybe an eight inch or nine inch bowl and you hold the pomegranate with the face down, the open face down, and you just bang on the top of the skin for about two to three minutes. At first, you're banging it with a, um, like a heavy wooden spoon or a heavy metal spoon. Just keep clunking on the top. And at first, you think nothing's going to happen. And then all of a sudden, it just rains all of the seeds. And you don't have to touch them all. And you, it, it's the most brilliant way <laughs> to clean a pomegranate. Wow. That's my two cents. Have you wow. done that before? Uh, that's amazing. Uh, I've never tried it before. It, I highly, highly recommend it. <laughs> well, I will try it with the ones that I did. So cut them like a... Uh, it's better if it's like the equator, you're like you're cutting okay. around the equator. And then you, you, pull the, you pull both sides apart, correct? Right. And then but you, you, hold don't, you don't cut all the way through. No, you cut all the way through. So you'll one half and you oh, do you, one half, you pound it. Okay. And then you do the other half and you pound it. Okay. You know, I'll I pour it back. Yes. Really. Okay. <laughs> I should turn on my camera and find my uh, my spoon and show you, but I, uh, I'm i upstairs in my office all of a sudden, so. <laughs> yeah. And in any case, I will wear my painting clothes just in case. Uh, yeah. I get some, <laughs> some stains. Thank you so much. Yeah, I can wait. And then, yeah, so if you do those touch-ups and then upload it, then I would love to see how that develops. So thanks, Julie. Okay, thank you. Awesome. And uh, cool. Ooh, okay, Lois. Uh, thank you so much. Hi, guys. For this. Hi. Let me just uh, put the image. Um, right next to it let me see if okay there we go oh sorry um where did you did you where did you get the pomegranates from um i had to go to two stores this morning oh um i guess they said it is a little early in the season so usually we get them from the farmer's market but they weren't bad so i did find whole foods uh, uh 2.99 each <laughs> that's not too bad actually <laughs> But yeah, that's outrageous. Uh, the persimmons are uh, three fifty, and they're tiny, and I just, I just can't. I mean, I mean, I love persimmons as well, but it's so expensive. But yeah, uh, cool. Well, that's uh, incredible. I love the bowl. Is the bowl something that is significant or has significant? This is value? one of my favorite bowls. I went to an estate sale, and everything in the house was absolutely gorgeous, and I wanted all of it, and. <laughs> All I could afford was this bowl wow. <laughs> on the table, but I just, it's got a sun shape and mm -hmm. I just really like the, um, I think pomegranates are very symbolic of the, you know, creation of the universe. So I really kind of wanted to play with that theme. Right. But I, I feel like my colors got a little, I started out very strong colors and celestial and it got kind of dull and weird colors. And yeah, I'm I, not I, sure about the background so much. Um, I just, uh, well, you know, I, I, I feel like there are a few changes and I, I, I love how um, you apply the changes. Uh, you shrank the bowl and you enlarged the uh, pomegranate, which I think it makes sense in the, in the sense that um, 
they take more uh, center stage. So in that sense, yeah, that works. The bowl is incredible. So it's as beautiful as the fruit and there's something really uh, nice about uh, that shape. So uh, yeah, don't touch anything, but yeah, um, I just feel like, um, yeah, that was a big, uh, that was a big change. And in, in that sense, um, I feel like, you know, they're still kind of new and possibly um, not bumpy enough, but I would possibly, um, it, I mean, it's not so much about the shapes, perhaps um, the uh, stripes on the skin, because I feel like this is very, um, almost like vertical. I don't know if they, if, if they would follow uh, more of a crescent shape, perhaps. I don't know if that's what they look like. Uh, it would enhance more the idea of um, something is organized inside of the fruit in a way that creates those stripes, those kind of like wedges. Because right now, it just feels uh, almost so shiny um, that, um, yeah, it doesn't read like that. But um, yeah, it's hard to tell because of the photo, but, uh, and also, um, I cannot see the pomegranate, uh, you know, the way the, the stripes are organized. Yeah, it's just getting a little thick. So I think a second pass yeah. where you can. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. And just consider, you know, again, the shape. Yeah. And also the yellow. Um, yeah. Yeah. Of those, yeah, that's wrong. No, 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 no. Well, but, just underneath, it needs something on top. Yeah, I would say, you know, um, it feels like it's it's been plucked out. So I would just bring, uh, it's not so much about the color, but I would just try to bring the idea of remaining stuff um, on whatever that is, the head or the tail of the pomegranate. Sort of like, you know, so it, it exists. There's something um, branching off from that, from that space. I love the dark shadow and I love the fact that you, um, uh, this is interesting because you brought a similar uh, uh, holder, um, a placemat, um, sorry, placemat, then um, Dina, but a different color. So I would take advantage of that. And I know you did. And this is a good idea. It almost feels like, a, I like the fact that it's, it's not contained. It almost feels like it's, it's on water. There's a reverberation of that texture. And I think it's, it's beautiful. And I love um, the slightly pinkish notes. I don't know if, if that's the case or not in the background. I think that's yeah, absolutely um, fantastic. And I would consider bringing a, maybe a variation of color on the table because perhaps some of the green even, I know you did, but this is incredible. Um, the, the variations of the color, the paleness. Um, I love the fact that uh, the edge is not super hard, that it's also uh, diffused, so um, it's, yeah, and the shadow, especially the cast shadow, um, that it's so colorful. Perhaps I would bring, um, I, I would expand it a little bit more. Maybe the bowl could be smaller, but I think the shadow could sort of have more yeah, of Yeah, that would fill that out a little. I think that's a good idea, compositionally, for sure. Mm -hmm. I like what you just said as I look at it. Amazing. It looks beautiful. And I love the cold and warm. I think this is incredible in that sense. Yeah, I think a Wednesday pass, you know, for some like details and some glazes. Yeah, for sure. It's just gonna, and especially with something like this, I know a second session uh, does a lot um, because we have such a strong base that then the, the little tweaks, um, they really take it to the next level. Push it, yeah, push it. Cool, thanks you guys. So can I tell you my favorite way of opening a pomegranate? Yes. You can go on YouTube and what you do is you cut out the, that flower part. You cut that out like a circle, like, a, like you kind of do like a stop sign cut around it and you pop that off and then you slice it down the sides. You'll see like along the ridges and so that it opens up like a flower. And then you get these big sections to pop out really easily. Oh, you so you, you, kind of like an Indian way of doing it. Uh, so you would almost like take the core, like you would do with the uh, with the. Uh, you section flowers. it like an orange, like you know how an orange comes in sections. That's right. Kind of, you kind of cut the outside like that. 
We have to have a party, a pomegranate party. A pomegranate party. party. Okay, that sounds amazing. And uh, I think I will also, I have two, so I will try two methods uh, <laughs> and see what happens. But thanks. Okay. Yeah, I usually, I don't know what I do. I, I just, um, I just cut them in half, but not uh, the way Julie said, kind of like from. Yeah, I want to try Julie's way. Yeah, I'll, I'll use that. And then I just uh, maybe do four sections and then I just, this is how I do it. I stuff my face on it <laughs> <laughs> and it's just not pretty, but I don't care. Uh, but yeah, thanks, uh, Lois. I will try that as well. Hey and guys. I will be looking Great forward weekend. To, yeah, to cheaper, I'll look forward to cheaper uh, pomegranates <laughs> in a few weeks. Uh, hopefully so um, but thanks everyone uh, this was in, fantastic I really appreciate it Jen thanks for all the research and to and for being on standby and taking pictures of uh, my stages I really appreciate it awesome no problem guys and notes are up okay perfect yeah and I um, forgot to send a um, link to replay last week uh but i will send it today um uh late today because uh it takes a long time to process on youtube the three hours uh it's a really slow process so um but yeah towards the end of the day i'll just send a replay and uh yeah this was fantastic it just took my head my mind off it's just so funny you know in the 10 minutes in the 10 minutes that uh we had a uh uh, as a break, um, let me just also do this. Hold on one second. Um, so, wait, 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 wait. Um, hold on. Uh, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't know what I did and I wanted to do something else, but I don't know here. Um, okay, yeah. All right, yeah, never mind. And the, um, in the 10 seconds that I, 10 seconds, 10 minutes that I had, um i just couldn't resist just checking the news because we live in such under such anxiety that i thought okay let me see what just happened because you, I, I expect every day to and certainly enough i mean some kind of like bs going on uh, <laughs> but anyhow uh on 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 a happy note uh thanks everyone and uh have the best weekend stay safe and um sending our love you guys are incredible and i'm so happy this worked out and um yeah so thank yay. you too it was lovely yes yes see you next talk. week it was really uh, it was really nice to um yeah to slow down and then do something uh, pretty that wasn't too complicated exactly yeah, yeah oh, i really good. enjoyed it uh, okay. it worked out so thank you so much Jen, how did your audition go last week? Am I allowed to ask? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I think it went really oh, well. It was cool. super fun to be back, but um, I the callback was today, and I'm with you guys, so <laughs> next <laughs> one not get one, but uh <laughs> but it was it was fun to be in the room, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's going to be a next one. Yes, as Claire said. And I'm looking forward to that. Thanks, guys. Me too. All right. I got to go. Bye, bye, guys. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.